On the air. Tonight's West Albany game is brought to you by Economy Supply Building Center, City and Suburban Electric, Albany Grocery Outlet, Mark Thomas Motors, Courtesy Corner Shell, H&R Block, Stavros Auto Services, Willamette Community Bank, Lassen RV, J&J Electric, Les Schwab Tires of Albany, Lynn Lanes, Brass Plumbing, Crabtree Automotive, Power Honda, Figaro's, Albany Athletic Club, Linco Federal Credit Union, Burgerville, Now Builders, Wilson Motors, and by Lynn Benton Tractor. Now, get ready for Bulldogs basketball. With all the action, here are Radio Ryan and Wally Orderman, live on 920 KSHO. And a very pleasant good evening to you. It's good to be here on a Friday with you from West Albany High School. It is a pink out tonight, and three gentlemen who are very pretty in pink here tonight to bring you a matchup between West Albany and Crescent Valley on K-Show. I am Ryan Pitts alongside Wally Orderman and Jeff Kider. The Pink Out, of course, are here to raise awareness for cancer. They had it last year against Lebanon. They have it here again tonight against Crescent Valley. And everybody here on the West Albany side basically dressed in pink. They were selling T-shirts at the door tonight. Wally, if you've listened to the broadcast earlier in the year, you would know that I've made mention of the vocabulary words that hang in the bathroom here at West Albany. That's right. And how they always seem to ring through for what we want to talk about during the game. Now I'm convinced they're just in on the joke with me because the two words tonight, the first is a tone to make amends for. The second is mammoth, huge, gigantic. West Albany obviously wanting to atone for an earlier loss to season to Crescent Valley in overtime by three. And this game, of all the games remaining on the schedule, the most mammoth. It is the biggest. It is the best chance for West Albany to try and improve their power ranking. West currently seventh, Crescent Valley 11th. Well, certainly uh, atonement is is one thing they want to do, but they can't let revenge be good evening to you by the way hi <laughs> they they can't let revenge be at the front of their minds tonight certainly you, you circle this one on the calendar and say okay this is when we get a little bit of payback but it, it can't be at the front of your mind it has to just kind of be lingering at the back because you've got a lot of focusing to do it's such a big game for west albany to maintain probably the last opportunity the biggest opportunity to solidify a high power ranking here at the end of the season if they were to win out West Albany, they need to just do what they do best now. They need to crash boards. They need to do all the things on both ends of the floor that uh, that, that help you secure victories. That game against Crescent Valley the last time is ancient history. Yes, West Albany, they know that's a game they should have had. They didn't get it, so they need to go out and take one from Crescent Valley tonight. It was a rough night for West. They started that game down 12 to nothing out of the gate. They didn't score a point until about two and a half minutes remained in the first quarter. And then by the second quarter, they had taken the lead. They got their way back in the game very quickly. They had as much as a six-point lead. It disappeared, and we all know the outcome. Crescent Valley won that game in overtime. Most recently for West Albany, we saw them put on a clinic like no other from outside in a victory over Lebanon on Tuesday night, a 40-point win, 77-37, to in which the Bulldogs knocked down 13 threes in 21 attempts. And truthfully, they were cold in the fourth quarter, or it could have been much higher. Chad Sherwood led the way, 7 of 8 from downtown, 23 points for Chad, tremendous shooting all around. What do you say about Chad Sherwood the other night? It was just, it was one of those Michael Jordan in the zone type moments where Chad, anytime he got the ball, and he was calling for it, I tell you, he had buried the first couple and he was calling for the ball as he should have been. He was feeling it from all sorts of range, in, inside the three, outside the three, and deep outside the three. Chad was feeling it, it was a special night for, for Chad, and, and great to see him kind of get back get back on the track with uh, with his shooting it's uh, it, it was it was something to watch he hit his first six threes he missed one then hit his seventh the starters did not play about the final 11 minutes of the game so no chance to pad stats but opportunities for other players to get in the action Cody Lahoda off the bench a season high nine points as the Bulldog got contributions from several different players in that 40 point win Crescent Valley is coming off something that West Albany can relate to and that is an 18 point loss to Silverton That's what took place to Crescent Valley on Tuesday night, a game where the Raiders got down big early, kind of clawed their way back in the third quarter, and then it it fell apart down the stretch a little bit as they wound up falling by 18 points. So both of these teams know what Silverton is made of. This game here, though, tonight, really to see who is the second-best team in this league. It is, and I don't think Crescent Valley really knows what West Albany has to bring because West didn't bring it the first time. West played soft in that game and and, uh, really let Crescent Valley hang around. West, I'm convinced, is a much better basketball team than Crescent Valley. 
That being said, Coach Mike Stair for Crescent Valley always has a very crafty team. He's always got a very prepared team, and they will they will be ready for West Albany and whatever West wants to bring tonight. I just think talent wise and athletic wise and uh, athleticism wise and and uh, here on your home floor advantage West Albany. But this Crescent Valley team will be prepared. They will play good defense. They'll be scrappy, and they'll uh, wouldn't be surprised to see them pressure West Albany full court. And then uh, and not do a lot possibly in transition themselves, but I think in getting in their half court sets, I think they'll be very efficient and work for very good shots. It seems all the more startling now, given what's taking place in league play. The Crescent Valley began their season with a 62 point loss to Churchill, 92 to 30 in the first game of the season. The Raiders have rebounded from that. They are 11 and six overall, seven and two, all alone in second place in the Midwell Amet. West Albany one game back, six and three in conference, 12 and seven overall. As West tries to pull themselves into a second place tie tonight, it is a mammoth night of basketball tonight from West Albany High School. The Raiders and the Bulldogs tip off coming your way shortly on 920 K Show. If you'd like to do it yourself or need helpful advice doing it, your neighborhood Ace Hardware and Contractor Center can help. Economy Supply Building Center has been that helpful place for over 58 years. Economy Supply Building Center, where Highway 34 becomes Tangent Street in Lebanon. Need some electrical work in your home or business, but it just seems like too small of a job to call the pros? No matter what the job, call City and Suburban Electric. Proud to be a contributing member of our community, City and Suburban Electric. Call 451-5609. Lassen RV at Albany has the new RV bottles on the lot now, ready for you to buy. Lassen RV Service Department has a new truckload of parts and accessories on sale just in time for pole fix-up. From changing a light bulb to rebuilding your entire RV, no job is too big or too small for Lassen RV at Albany, where friends send their friends. Join the fun at the Albany Athletic Club. Group fitness classes from low-impact dance to traditional circuit training, plus racquetball and more. Watch your waistline shrink and your health improve every day. Start now at the Albany Athletic Club on Hickory next to Tom's Garden Center. Unforgettable 920. Welcome back here to West Albany High School on this Friday night. Bulldogs and Raiders this evening on K-Show. You know it's a big night when West Albany arranges to have a celebrity speak pregame in the locker room. That celebrity tonight was none other than the gentleman who sits to my left, Wally Ordeman. I would not ask you to divulge what was said in the locker room verbatim, but give me kind of the gist of what was said to the team. Well, the, the flavor of it was that I've been hoping to talk with, with the team. You know, it's, it's one of those situations where I coached all of these, with the exception of Isaiah Edwards, I've coached every guy on this this West Albany team, and I miss it. And, and uh, you know, the opportunity to see them every day and, you know, in part, just a little bit of knowledge <laughs> to them over time. And and I just I got with Coach Zim and I, you know, I just asked if I could have the three minutes. And basically what I wanted to say was that uh, that that Crescent Valley right now feels that you're soft because that's how you played them the first time. I said it's it's time now to make something special happen over for the course of the se- the rest of the season, and that is to start imposing your will on other teams and it starts tonight. And that's I mean, it got a little deeper than that, and, and I, you know, we talked a little bit about self-motivation and, you know, what it takes to trigger your own motivation, and talked a little bit about that. But uh, really, all it came down to was, uh, you know, go out there and get these guys because they don't know what you can bring yet. Mike Stair had a quote in the Gazette Times where he basically said what everybody would expect that West Albany was going to come after Crescent Valley tonight. They knew it. They know that West Albany will probably come out a little bit harder than normal given the way the game wound up the first time. But in a way, that might almost be what Crescent Valley wants because you mentioned the scrappiness of this Raider team. They kind of want to get you out of sorts, and it's it's a hallmark of Crescent Valley basketball over the years. If you look at the other teams in the league that have been successful, Silverton obviously over the years, and especially in the last four, has had Zach Gangler, a superstar. Woodburn, when they made the state tournament, had Andy Avgi, a superstar. Corvallis won two state championships with Jake Ehlers, a superstar. Name one prolific scorer that Crescent Valley has had during the time that we've done these games. No. You'd be hard-pressed to name one. No, you can't, and they're the ultimate of team basketball, certainly, and that's, that's what Coach Mike Stair, uh, you know, that, that's what he preaches and what he, what he brings to the table, and it's a great recipe for Crescent Valley because they haven't had that standout score. You're absolutely right, but they will, they will be well-coached, and they will, they will just, uh, it, it's, it's a gang attack, and, and you're right. They get you out of sorts. They get you off balance, and, try and keep you from running the things that you want to run. If West Albany can rebound like we know they can and defend like we know they can, I'm not worried about this game. I'm not worried about it at all. 
if they come out uh, if they come out tough and crash on the board, I think West Albany can win this game by by 20. I Ooh. mean, I, I I do. It just they're, they're capable. Just yeah. just be, they are because because that's the that's the tough West Albany team that we've seen in in uh, you know certain isolated games. If they come out uh, passive and and let Crescent Valley bring the the game to them going to be a struggle the whole night. I think particularly with the game here at home, we're more likely to see the former of the two, a team that really comes out fired up. You can feel the energy in here. This is following a girls varsity game. Incidentally, won by West Albany. They pushed their record now to 19-0 on the season. The power rankings, say about them what you will. The Bulldogs have been overtaken in the power rankings on the girls' side by Springfield. Springfield is now number one. In fact, Springfield and Willamette are one and two in the coaches' polls, and undefeated West Albany just sitting there at number three. It was not a pretty game prior to this, but a game won by the West Albany girls. That fueled the emotion in the building a little bit. Obviously, the pink out has everybody with a little bit more emotion tonight. You would expect to see the Bulldogs come out with some fire as they look for some revenge, although you said to avoid the word re revenge. <laughs> you know they want revenge. Well, I, I like the word atonement, and I, I like your vocabulary words Thank tonight, and, and I don't think about going into the restroom to find my vocabulary <laughs> words for the day, but that seems to work for you. More often than not, if you're finding words in the restroom, they're not ones that you want to mention on air. As long as you're not reading them off the, the stall door itself, you're doing okay. And these are on little placards in the restroom, so it's all right. Atonement and mammoth. Those, again, your theme words here for tonight. Raiders and Bulldogs tip off a few minutes aside, so we'll take a timeout and continue at 920 K Show. You will come out a winner at Power Honda. Their talented staff will show you how easy it is to get the vehicle you want and the payment you need. Check out MyPowerHonda.com. Call 928-0122 or just go in to Power Honda. Highway 20 east of I-5 in Albany, your Honda Superstore. Albany Burgerville is now featuring the Ham Havarti Sandwich, all-natural Nyman Ranch ham layered with melted Havarti cheese on a toasted hoagie roll and the chocolate hazelnut milkshake. Pick up an Albany Burgerville rewards card now. Cash for every dollar spent. Albany Burgerville. Fresh. Local. Sustainable. We're Linco Federal Credit Union. Keep your money in Lynn County with Linco Federal Credit Union. Enjoy a visit with one of our friendly staff at a neighborhood branch near you today. Linco Federal Credit Union in Albany, Lebanon, and Sweet Home. In Lynn, you're in. Albany Grocery Outlet Bark and Market across from the Heritage Mall has Senior Day, the first Tuesday of every month. $2 off every purchase of $15 or more. Albany Grocery Outlet Bark and Market, 100% satisfaction guaranteed across from the Heritage Mall with bargains on the brands you trust. 920 KSHO. Back here at West Albany High School, counting down to tip off tonight between the Raiders and the Bulldogs here on KSHO. Crescent Valley began this year at 2 and 4. And since December the 27th, when they lost to Thurston, they have not lost to anybody not named Silverton. They've won 9 of 11 since that sluggish start. The Raiders also dispatched of their nemesis, Corvallis, earlier this season, a game that was played at Gill Coliseum. One of the things I would like to know, and I meant to ask Mike Stare this, but I didn't even talk to him before the game, is whether that game was already scheduled to be at Gill Coliseum. It was a double ladder, girls and boys. We know that the bleachers over at Crescent Valley had been recently condemned. So the teams played a doubleheader at Gill Coliseum. The way the power rankings are set up, if you win a game at home, you get 0.8 points. If you win a game at a neutral site, you get one point. So you would actually get a little bit more to play a game at a neutral site. Now with the bleachers being down, again, maybe it was already planned. That would be a little shrewd move by Mike Stare if he had said, well, let's move it to a neutral site just for that little RPI boost. Oh, that's a, a really interesting thing. I hadn't even thought about that. But that's a pretty good catch on your part. Something else that I just caught as well, Tanner Sanders is in, sitting at the end of the bench, hasn't been out for warm-ups. I think we may not be seeing him in this game tonight. Our uh, intrepid sideline reporter, Wally Ordeman here, seated next to me, taking note of something I probably should have seen a long time ago. In fact, Tanner Sanders is way down to the left. That would be a big loss for Crescent Valley, although they do have a lot of different guys that can get it done. In the first matchup, Tanner Sanders got some points. But really, it was Jared Baumgartner that was the killer. He was able to shoot from outside, hit some daggers down the stretch for Crescent Valley. Baumgartner is a talented athlete, and, and you know that he can bring it. He has that potential. A little surprised at that game that, that he was the one that ended up being the ultimate scorer for, for Crescent Valley. But you said it yourself a little bit earlier. You don't know who's going to bring it for Crescent Valley. You expect Tanner Sanders to be kind of the kind of the go-to guy for them, but they have, they have weapons, and they have good team ball movement they they work so well as a team that you don't know who's going to light it up west albany coming down the stretch has one of the easier remaining schedules 
in the conference. Believe it or not, the easiest belongs to Silverton, whose remaining opponents are a combined 32 and 61. Oh, and a little... You knew about this, didn't you? I the, didn't know about this. The Bulldogs having taken off their warm-ups and their uniforms are full pink. We did not see that last year. The warm-ups are pink. The jerseys are pink. It's a good look from West. Yes, yes it is. It, uh, they're tough enough to wear pink. <laughs> and all of the players, several younger players coming down on the floor, all wearing the shirts that say shooting for a cure on the front with the pink ribbon and all the proceeds from the shirts sold before the game went to the American Cancer Association. And this is a nice gesture. You're seeing a lot more teams do this at the collegiate level. I don't know how many do it in high school. Well, it's nice that West has done it the last couple of years. It really is. I think it's a class move by West Albany. And it's, uh, it's gotten less subtle, I can tell you that, with the players coming out of these pink jerseys. But, but it's, uh, you know, it, it's just I like this. It, it creates awareness amongst the town. It creates some bonding amongst the players and the students themselves. And it's, uh, you know, I just I like this move by Coach Zim and the athletic director rich Engel to, to make this night happen now one player that i'm scanning for here as the bulldogs are getting set to have their starters introduced is brandon dixon who i don't see in uniform he took that heavy fall on tuesday early in the game bruce's tailbone there he is at the end of the warm-up line ready to take high fives but not in the starting lineup tonight for west i talked to brandon pre-game and, and he said that it was going to be kind of a game time decision he's going to see how he did in warm-ups he did practice but in a sparing role yesterday he wasn't quite sure whether he'd be able to to actually hit the court tonight but uh but it looks like maybe we know at least he's not going to start i would doubt that we'd see brandon dixon in this game still a little bit tender Crescent Valley starting five, having been introduced down to our left. Justin Ditchin, the point guard, the 5'8 senior. Tanner Holland, the 6'3 senior. Jared Baumgartner, 6'1 senior. Jacob Wood, a 5'10 senior. And Tanner Fees, a 6'2 senior. The change for West Albany with Brandon Dixon not starting. Cody Lahoda coming off the season high nine points on Tuesday. He is in the starting lineup, a 6'1 junior, along with the remaining four, whose names you know well by now. Sawyer Reed, the 5'10 senior. Chad Sherwood, the 6'2 senior. Nate Sherwood, the 6'8 junior. And Jalen Schlegel, the 6'8 senior. Another solid game for Jalen on Tuesday night. Kind of went overshadowed with the Bulldogs lighting it up on the side. 12 points, 8 rebounds for Jalen Workman. like Yeah, Jalen, Jalen's been playing like a man the last few games. Really, I, I like his attitude on the rebounding side and really is starting to look for his shot. We know that Jalen's going to get bumped around a lot on the basketball floor. I think he's starting to accept that that a little bit more, not complaining as much about all the contact and really playing through it very well. Jalen's still averaging the team high, 15.5 points per game. Nate Sherwood, Tanner Holland, set to jump it in center circle. Bulldogs, all pink uniforms, dark blue, the navy blue numbers and letters. Ball in the air and a tip awkwardly controlled by Crescent Valley as they'll work at the rim down to our right. With the Bulldogs wearing these alternate pinks, Crescent Valley wears their home whites with the maroon and gold trim. Ditchin feeds Baumgartner, fakes the three, pulls up at the foul line, over Lahoda, and hits the first shot of the game. Jared Baumgartner makes it 2 nothing Raiders just underway as Chad Sherwood gets the Bulldogs' first possession in front court. Up straight ahead to Cody Lahoda, now right wing for Sawyer Reed. Reed's going to pull for three, off to the right, no good, rebounded by Tanner Holland. 13 of 21 were the Bulldogs in three-point range on Tuesday, missing the first one here tonight. As Tanner Holland feeds Tanner Fees, now around to Ditchin on the right wing, guarded by Nate Sherwood, pass to the top, stolen by Chad, on the run to the rim, lays it in with the right hand, we're tied at two. West immediately the full court trap. And a ball lost out of bounds by Crescent Valley, good D by Cody Lahota forcing the turnover, as Justin Ditchin could not handle the pressure. I like the energy as Chad gets a steal, goes in for the bucket, and the West immediately to the full court trap, try and do create the turnover. Sawyer Reed to inbound, comes long into backcourt for Chad Sherwood, who does a smart thing, lets it bounce all the way back to the opposing foul line, and now we'll bring it to front court, angling right with the dribble, Jared Baumgartner waiting to meet him. Chad picks up the dribble, comes left for Cody Lahoda, thought about the three, hands it off to Jalen on the cut to the rim, got Holland in the air, goes up, bumped and fouled, got the bucket, count it, plus one. Good patience by Jalen on that play, got the defender up, waited for the contact, and then went right through it. For the easy high off glass shot, Jalen with chance to make this a three point game here. Four to two, Bulldogs. Foul is on Tanner Holland, his first, Raiders first. Yeah, Jalen trying to complete the three point play. Free throw on its way. No good, too strong. And the rebound chased down by Tanner Holland. 4 2 West, 6.50 to go in the opening quarter. 
Justin Ditchin will walk the ball up the floor. Chad Sherwood meets him at midcourt. Ditchin angles left, feeds Baumgartner. Baumgartner right back to Ditchin between the circles. Now to Holland, left elbow. And back out to Ditchin. Bulldogs extending the defense out on the perimeter as Wood feeds Fees into the paint through Schlegel. Missed the layup. Rebound on the floor and pulled down by Jalen. Off to Sawyer Reed on the run, up the right side. Beats Cody Lahoda in the corner. He's going to launch a three and hit it from the corner. Three for Cody Lahota, seven straight for West. They lead 7-2. Yeah, I like the energy, too. They're really getting down to transition. That time, quick pass to Lahota, buries the three. Jacob Wood lost the handle, picks it back up, hands it off to Baumgarten. Down the lane, scoop shot, too strong, rebound West. Nate Sherwood pulls it out of traffic. Up to Sawyer Reed, Coach Zim wants him to run. Up ahead to Chad, now to Jalen, left of the blocks. Spinning his way in, goes up, lays it in. It's 9-2. Mike Stair wants a timeout, and the Bulldogs off to the hot start. An early seven-point lead, a 9-0 run for the Bulldogs with 5.56 to go in the first. Oh, that's just a great start that you want. Crest Valley gets on the board first. West doesn't care. They come down with a purpose. A couple of good, long outlet passes get it, get going in transition. Bulldogs burying some shots. Jalen looks possessed right now. Crashing the boards hard and a couple of easy shots up front. Missed the one free throw, but other than that, it's flawless to start this game. Jalen Strong inside, and how about Cody Lahoda? No hesitation. His first start of the season. Get him free in the corner. He knocks down the triple. Little, little Clyde Drexler drill shot there from the outside. Looked a little flat, but splat. And he, ooh, nicely you done. like that. And he even wears 22. <laughs> yes, old, he does. The old Clyde number. Drexler. Clyde Drexler. 9-2 Bulldogs out of the quick timeout. Jared Baumgartner will inbound against full court pressure. It's light full court pressure. Ditchin takes it, gets it back to Baumgartner. Up into the middle for Wood. Wood to the rim. Maybe got away with a walk. Hands it off to Fees who can't hit. Fees hits the ground hard and we're going to get a foul on the rebound going against West Albany. Boy, you've got to get that travel call right there in the key. Sometimes you can you can let that go if it's outside, doesn't have any effect on the play. When somebody travels inside the key, you've got to call that. Yeah, Fees looked like he skipped his way through. The foul on Lahota, his first. Bulldogs first. Inbound to Wood. He's open for three. In and out, no good. Rebound to Fees. Clearing space. Goes up in the paint and lays it in. Strong moves from Tanner Fees. It ends a 9-0 Bulldog run. 9-4 with five and a half to go in the opening quarter. Sherwood to Lahota. Now to Reed. Left wing. Reed comes straight away, now right for Chad Sherwood, calling for a pick, waiting patiently for the pick. Now uses the Jalen Schlegel screen, working left, curls it underneath for Nate, all alone underneath, he lays it in with the oh, right hand. Oh, man, could have gone either to Jalen or Nate. Jalen smart to let that go, knew Nate was behind him. Easy two, great assist by Chad. Nicely done from the top right to the rim, and a layup for Nate Sherwood. Jared Baumgartner on the run. Drops up underneath for Wood. Wood in traffic lays it up and in. Got to start doing something about that dribble penetration by, by Crescent Valley. It's making good things happen for him. 11-6 as the Bulldogs try to work it into Jalen Schlegel. Bobbles in the catch. Now comes left side for Sawyer Reed just in front of the Raider bench. Reed out to Chad Sherwood. Straight away for Jalen Schlegel behind the arc. Looking in for Nate. Now gets it back to Chad out between the circles. Chad pushing to his right, guarded by Baumgartner. Going to get a high screen from Jalen, doesn't use it, and it comes left for Reed. Reed right back to Chad Sherwood. Now to Reed, straight away. 4.25 to go in the opening quarter. 11-6, West Albany, an early five-point lead. Reed, up stop, now left for Chad. Baumgartner in the defensive crouch. Chad scanning the D, comes cross court right for Reed. Down low for Nate, got around Fees, and laid it in. Very nicely done on the ball movement from West Albany. Nate Sherwood has four. Already eclipsing his point total from Tuesday. Wood looking to go coast to coast on Lahoda and lays it in. He did get all the way to the rim. Cody Lahoda looks a little gassed. Yeah, and he's already tapped out. West going to look for some opportunities here. To... Oh, the interior pass. They're going to get a travel on Jalen Schlegel. Looked like he was being held on the catch. Lost his footing. And will be called for a walk. As Cody Lahota, high energy minutes early, huffing and puffing as he comes out. Josh Bryant will replace yeah, him. Yeah, well deserved break. Just uh, you get a get a bigger, wider body in here for the for the boards of Josh Bryant here in this game. Turnover by West here on the travel. Now, how about this touch too? The officials tonight, the pink whistles. Oh, you mentioned the Bulldogs so. with the pink uniforms, and a lot of students and fans wearing pink shirts. The officials pink whistles. As the Raiders inbound, down five. If Jacob Wood looking to go all the way in and bounce it off the knee of Nate Sherwood, and they'll call the kick out of bounds to CV. And, and you can't do that. That's, that's, that's not the right call there. If it inadvertently hits the foot, you've got to let that go. 
Baumgartner to inbound underneath for the Raiders. Gets it. Oh, almost into Wood. Nate took it right away. Up to Chad. Back to Nate. Trailing. Palmahawk dunk with the right hand for Nate Sherwood. Emphatically through traffic, Nate puts it down with one hand. Oh, man. The first one there to high five him. Brother Chad through the beautiful pass. Boy, did he get through the paint in a hurry. 15 8, West Albany. Kitchen on the right wing, guarded by Reed. Gets rid of it to Holland. Schlegel right in his face. Holland out behind the arc. One dribble. Looking for help. Comes back to the top for Ditchin. Thinking about it. Deep three. Now puts it on the deck. Right of the lane. Jump shot. Off to the left. And a rebound pulled down by Chad Sherwood. Bulldogs again running. Sawyer Reed to front court. He'll slow up a little on the left wing. Coming to the top. Gets to Chad Sherwood. Out on the right side. Chad holds. Looks for something. Comes back to the left for Reed. Boy, Nate's got a big mismatch right now on his defender. Jalen, a little turnaround jumper off glass. Too strong. And a rebound to Wood. Raider ball. West with a seven-point lead. 2.45 to go in the opening quarter. Baumgartner in front of the Bulldog student body. Feeds Wood, who lost the handle. Jalen Schlegel picks it up, absorbs a bump, and brings it to front court on his own. Backing it out. Feeds the trailing Chad Sherwood. In rhythm for three. Splash for Chad. A triple from up top. Pick it up where he left off on Tuesday. West leads by 10. 18 to 8. And West has certainly come out with some fire tonight. Wood through Nate Sherwood. No whistles. Sherwood hit the floor. Down low to Baumgartner. Along the baseline. Awkward shot. Missed. Rebound comes down to Nate. Home run up top for Jalen Schlegel. All the way in. Jalen is held. Intentional foul coming on Justin Ditchin. And that's the right call. Justin Ditchin does the nice thing and taps Jalen on the back. Says, hey, I didn't mean any harm. Just wanted to keep you from throwing it down. Yeah, that's good sportsmanship right there. And, and uh, absolutely the right call. When you hug the man, that, that has to be the call. But how about the outlet from Nate to Jalen on that play? Full court pass. And, and Jalen with the height advantage there going up to, to get that pass. Nothing the defender could do. He had a timeout taken by Crescent Valley with 2.06 to go in the first quarter. It's the second timeout the Raiders have used. 18-8 West Albany. And the Bulldogs coming out fired up tonight. The dunk from Nate Sherwood, the certain highlight of the first quarter, but nice to see Chad knock down his first three, too. You bet it is. And, and West Albany who, with uh, Sawyer had missed the three, and I think there was one other three taken. But uh, Lahota hits, hits a three. Chad Sherwood hits a three, and, and really then the, the dunk by Nate. But let's let's remember, West Albany not trying to be a three-point shooting team. You know, they had the had a bunch of How many did they have? 13. 13 against Lebanon. You know, and that's just because Lebanon wasn't closing out very well. Let's not forget that West Albany doesn't want to be a three-point shooting team. They'll take them when the, when the opportunity presents itself. But that's just, we won't see 13 threes from West again on this season. I would be shocked. But West, as long as the as uh, teams are going to pack it in against the bigs from West Albany, West has to be able to light it up from outside to keep teams honest and to soften up the middle. Yeah, it's worked the last couple of nights. Two threes already here in the first quarter for West Albany. An 18-8 to lead with 2.06 to go in the first. Now, I don't think anybody should mistake Crescent Valley. I think they're going to go away quietly in this one. They have a way of clawing their way back into games. Sure they do, and Wes needs to keep that motivation. We talked in the pregame about self-motivation. What's going to light you up here throughout this game and make it, make it go for four quarters? Chris Valley's going to make their run at, at West. Wes just needs to stand it. Jalen missing the first free throw out of the timeout. He'll get two, and West will get the ball on the intentional foul against Ditchin. So Jalen no good on the first, ready for a second. Takes his time, releases, and cannot hit. So the only downside of the first quarter, Bulldogs 0 for 3 from the line. West will get possession here. Keaton Bader into the lineup, replacing Jalen Schlegel. Jalen had a good first quarter here. We won't see him back. He'll start the second quarter. A little bit extra break here. Give him some breath here. 2.06 to go here in the first. Ben Angle also on the floor for West. Bounces it in, trying to get it down low to Bader. Bader fighting for the ball, and we're going to get a quick jump ball with the arrow favoring the Bulldogs. Ricardo Gonzalez has checked in for Crescent Valley. He hit some big threes on Tuesday as the Raiders got themselves back into the game against Silverton. Game they ultimately lost by 18. Ben Angle feeds Keaton Bader on the left wing. Bader hands it off to Chad, curling behind him. Deep three on the way for Chad. He got it. This kid's in the zone. 21 to 8 Bulldogs. No fear from Chad Sherwood and a deep, oh deep three. Oh, man. 
Ditchin into the paint. Chad looked for the block. Ditchin missed the shot. Rebounded by Ben Angle. Angle up ahead. He's got to be looking for number three in the pass hit Chad right in the face. Jared Baumgartner takes it the other way. Scoop layup. Good as he lost his footing. Awkward shot. I think anticipating contact. Yeah, he hit thought, the floor. He thought he was going to get pounded by Chad on that pet play. Chad did a good job just backing off of it. 21 to 10, Bulldogs. 120 to go in the first. Nate Sherwood, left elbow jumper. No good off the left. Keaton Bader, an offensive rebound. Back out to Ben Angle. He's going to launch a three from the right wing. No good, long. Rebound by Nate. Puts it back up and in. And the Bulldogs, the Bulldogs are using their size here, Wally. Yep. Nate had perfect position, inside position on Gonzalez there. Just put up the soft jumper on the putback. 23 to 10, West. One minute to go in the first. Gonzalez comes to the right for Holland and whistle away from the ball. Bill Draper blowing the whistle. Yeah, they're going to get Chad. Chad was trying to, to uh, cut off the, the cutter going through. Got a little bit extra of him. Falls to the floor. Only the second team foul on the Bulldogs first on Chad. And only two on the Raiders. They're really letting him play here in the early going. Jacob Wood has returned for the Raiders. Ditching out. Wood will inbound underneath. Now a late subs. Cody Lahota will return. And Nate Sherwood will check out. So the Bulldogs with Ben Angle, Chad Sherwood, Josh Bryant, Keaton Bader, Cody LaHoda with 56.3 going the first. West leading by 13. Wood on the inbound. It's tipped and stolen by Ben Angle. On the run out, Chad Sherwood all the way to the goal lane. It's in with the right hand, and the Bulldogs have a quarter century here in the first quarter. 25 to 10 West. And Ben Angle did the right thing there. He got out in the break and let Chad get some separation from the defender before he threw the pass. Nice job by Ben with the assist. Gonzalez out top to Fees, hounded by Bryant, puts it on the deck all the way in. Tough shot as he lost the handle and put it in. Looking for a foul. Lost the handle on the way up, still dropped it in. 25-12, to 12, Bulldogs. Chad Sherwood straight away to Lahota. now left for Angle, around the Bader screen, hits the curling Bader inside, had it stripped, ball high in the air up top, and tapped into the hands of Josh Bryant. Ben Angle went up to tip that one to his teammate. And now Coach Zimmerman says let hold one shot, 10 seconds to go in the first. Chad Sherwood with it in his hands. Any question what's going to happen here? Around a screen from Bader. Drops it to the cutting. Ben Angle. Teardrop. No. Rebound loose on the floor. Pulled down by the Raiders. And right before the horn, a foul will be called on Ben Angle. A hack that will end the first quarter through one. West Albany 25 in Crescent Valley 12. We will take a break and come back here to 920 K-Show. Family owned and operated since 1979, Crabtree Auto stresses the small stuff when it comes to maintaining your vehicle. An oil change every 3,000 miles is a small thing now, but adds up to big rewards down the road. Crabtree Auto on Hill Street, just south of 9th in Albany. Now is the time to buy a car at Mark Thomas Motors. Four generations in the auto business and here to stay. Mark Thomas Motors is big on supporting local events. Three locations in Albany, Dodge Chrysler Jeep, Hyundai, GMC Buick Pontiac. Now is the time to buy a car at Mark Thomas Motors in Albany. Just like the Bulldogs, Courtesy Corner Shell gives you everything they have every time you drive in. Fast and friendly service, windows always clean. Non-ethanol fuels for small engines, boats, and vintage cars available. You can't beat Courtesy Corner Shell near Queen on Pacific Boulevard. They'll be happy to see you. Lynn Lane's in Lebanon, home of the best burger in town. The place to bowl is Lynn Lane's Bowling Center on South Main Road in Lebanon. And the people are real nice. And the Head Pin Restaurant, I'd go there even if the bowling alley wasn't attached. Good family fun. Bowling. America's best music and the news you need. This is 920 KSHO, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis. Well, Wally, you weren't there the first time these two teams played this year. Care to take a guess how many points West Albany had at the half of that game? I'm going to say 25. 25. And at the end of one tonight, 25. A 25-12 lead for the Bulldogs as we start the second. Raiders in possession with Tanner Fees handling out midcourt. Good pressure from Cody Lahota. Gets rid of it to Wood. So you read with the D on him. Now right for Holland. Hounded by Lahota on the switch. Holland, one dribble, a handoff to Gonzalez. Into the middle for Fees. Jumper blocked by Jalen Schlegel. Pulled down by Gonzalez. Out to Wood, driving through the lane. Teardrop way too strong. Rebounded by Nate Sherwood. Up to Sawyer Reed. Long ahead to Cody Lahoda in the right corner. Cody to the top for Bryant. Bryant around to the left for Reed. Faking on the three. Now comes back out. Uses a Bryant screen. Now a Schlegel screen all the way to the right. Slows back to control the dribble. High out on the right wing. Reed looking for something underneath. Now goes to the corner for Nate Sherwood. 
To the foul line for Schlegel. Inside Bryant. What ball movement, Bryant, oh, a layup. Wow, and what a touch pass by Jalen Schlegel to get it to Josh Bryant, who had positioned himself perfectly against the defender down low. Wally, one of the things that Jeff Kyder and I talked about during the first game was West Albany's inability to get the ball inside. They seem to have made a real effort to do that tonight. It's working well. Yeah, it sure is. And, and uh, you know, Crescent Valley, give them some credit. They've gotten to the rim a few times, too. They, you can tell they're not going to settle for the outside shot. They're trying to get to the paint as well. Justin Ditch and a little floater for the Raiders is good. It's 27-14 as Jalen Schlegel gets his way underneath, missed the shot, got his own rebound, goes up for a second time, blocked by Tanner Holland. Out to Lahota, right back down this low is, for Jalen. This is going up. Reposting. Nearly had it stripped. Into the corner for Lahota. Going to try a three. No hit way. It, we're no way. Foul. There's no way. An offensive foul on West Albany. So wipe off the shot. Oh, my. Oh, my. I'm glad there's a video portion of this program tonight because that's going to be able to be seen right there. Jalen just trying to get the defender off of him. And what the referee saw, what the referee saw was Jalen trying to, was his retaliation there. Can't get caught up in that. Announcers can't either. <laughs> well, it wipes off the three, which would have given West Albany a 16-point lead. It stays at 13, 27-14 with 6.15 to play in the first half. Ditchin up ahead to Gonzalez. Gonzalez hands it back to Ditchin. Sherwood there to meet him on a switch and a bump and a foul out top. And he'll get Chad for it, his second, Bulldogs fifth. I want to go back to what you said a moment ago about there being a video portion just to explain. The West Albany AV Club with cameras set up around the gym here and pulling in our audio feed. So our thanks to them for putting our audio on you, their video. You bet. You bet. That's what the AV stands for, I'm told. It's audio <laughs> and video. And we've got both, evidently. Ditchin on the inbound after the Bulldogs' fifth team foul. Now Ditchin driving. Left elbow. Had it stripped and stolen. Sawyer Reed gets it. Up ahead to Chad. Looking to go all the way in on Wood. But set up and in with a foul. Chad Sherwood, a strong drive inside. His brother was calling for the alley-oop on the left. Chad took it all the way in, has a chance for three. And Chad made the right decision, and this is why. There's a defender too close to that. I think if he tries to get that up to, to Nate, Nate might be able to go up high enough to get it, but probably has a defender disrupt that play. Chad did the right thing, taking it strong himself. And completes the three-point play, and the Bulldogs have their biggest lead at 16. 30-14, to 5.50 to go in the first half. Tremendous start tonight for the Bulldogs. Jacob Wood, way out high, goes to the right corner for Gonzalez. Tough catch, doubled, has his pass tipped into the hands of Fees. Foul line extended, now to the top for Wood. Got out of the way, maybe with a walk. Drives in, misses the right-hand shot, and a rebound to Bryant. Sawyer Reed on the push, up ahead. Chad Sherwood going to launch another three, and got another one with a friendly roll. How big does that bass look to him oh right now? Oh, my. Like a 50-gallon drum. Three more threes tonight for Chad. Ten in his last five and a half quarters. 19-point Bulldog lead. Ditch it. Into Holland. Holland, jump shot. Missed it long, and a foul is going to go here against Tanner Fees, pushing Sawyer Reed in the back on the rebound. Fees, I, I tell you, he plays really, really hard. Tanner Fees, we've watched him for a couple of years now, and plays so hard. And he's a big, wide body underneath. He's a strong young man. And at that time, Sawyer Reed doing his best to block out and did it perfectly. Fees has to go through Sawyer Reed to get that rebound. Referee right on top of it. Cody Lahota has returned for West Albany. Nate Sherwood will sit down. So it's Bryant, Reed, Chad Sherwood, Schlegel, and Lahota out there. For the Raiders, Ditchin, Fees, Wood, Gonzalez, and Baumgartner. Jerry Baumgartner has returned. Reed. He hands it off to Chad up top around a Schlegel screen. Drops it inside for Jalen, being closed out by Baumgartner. Throws it away into the hands of Ditchin. Probably should have been a whistle and a foul, but CB takes it up ahead. Ditchin left of the lane, throws it back out to Wood. Wood into the corner, Ditchin for three. Back rim, no good. Rebound. <laughs> Bulldogs took it away from each other. Schlegel and Reed, Baumgartner in. Maybe a foul should have been called there as Baumgartner missed the shot. Bulldogs come away with it. Well, Helter Skelter, both teams looking for whistles. Chad Sherwood, front court three. You know it. Who is this kid? <laughs> Chad, another three. It's 36 to 14 West Albany. Chad is four of four and 11 of his last 12 from three point range. And rate. how deep were those, the last two that he's taken, the last three that he's taken beyond NBA range with those threes? He's feeling it. Wow. 
Though that bucket looks like a manhole cover to him right now. <laughs> Unbelievable. Chad Sherwood. 21 points here. Four and a half to go in the second quarter. Chad Sherwood with 21. And the Bulldog lead is 22. 36 to 14 with 421 to go in the first half. I want you in the locker room before every single <laughs> game. Whatever you said in there. I take zero credit for, <laughs> for, for for that. We did have a very fine time for that five minutes or so. Yeah, but, yeah. How, but how about Chad Sherwood there? It, it, in, in this quarter and a half for, for, uh, for West Albany, Chad Sherwood, he's hitting from the outside because Crescent Valley has devoted themselves to, to packing it in on the inside against the Bulldog Bigs. That's opening things up for Cody LaHoda, Chad Sherwood, Sawyer Reed. Anybody that's playing the one, two, or three is going to be able to take advantage of Crescent Valley having to pack it in against the Bulldog Bigs. I want to point this out, Wally. I apologize for not having this earlier, but a young man from the AV Club just came over told me this game is on WAHSTV.com. Waz TV. WAHSTV.com. And they have our audio feed. So if you want to get the video portion too, now's your chance. So we'll uh, be sure to repeat that here yes. in, the, in, in each of the subsequent quarters, too, so people have the opportunity possibly to be watching this game as well. 36-14 Bulldogs. 4-10 to go in the first half out of another CV timeout. Tanner Fees driving in through Jalen Schlegel. Offensive foul. Put his shoulder right into Jalen. And three different Bulldogs there to help him up. Two trips down the floor. Two, two uh, fouls on Tanner Fees. Here in this quarter, going to be, I believe that's his second team foul. The two in a row on subsequent trips down the floor. His second, Raiders fifth. Team's now even five apiece. As Mohammed Hassan will come in for Crescent Valley. Tanner Holland returns. What are the odds a roster of 12 young men is going to have three Tanners on it? I, you know, I've been trying to find a way to work that in the last <laughs> two games. There's a, a place down in Eugene. It's obviously a Tanny place. It's called Tanner's Paradise. The real Tanner's Paradise is Crescent Valley High School. They've got three of them on the roster. Nate Sherwood feeds Josh Bryant on the right blocks. Looked to go to LaHoda, had it stolen by Muhammad Hassan. On the run to front court, picks up the dribble, comes back to Ditchin. Knocked away by Schlegel and chased down by Ditchin near midcourt. Weaving through traffic, gets it back to Holland. Now to the right, Baumgartner faking the three, driving along the baseline. Into some trouble, comes out to Hassan. He'll fire a three that's short. Rebound batted up in the air, pulled down by Baumgartner, who was on the baseline. It'll belong to West Albany with 3.33 to go in the half. West Albany really playing hard in the paint now, contesting every Crescent Valley shot, whether it's outside or, or inside the paint. West Albany really getting a hand up, closing out on the outside and getting, uh, getting bodies on people on the inside. Sawyer Reed straight away to Schlegel. Jalen back to the left for Reed. Looking for Jalen, posting inside to pass a little too tall. Jalen tries to save it, does, but right to Wood. Wood in the front court for the Raiders. Now to the right for Hassan. All the way in. Fouled from behind. In their reach from Sawyer Reed. Team foul number six on the Bulldogs. Final non-shooter of the half. Maybe we're getting spoiled, but a couple of unproductive trips down the floor for the Bulldogs there at the offensive end. Got to get back. You, you don't necessarily want the first quick shot. Keep that ball movement going. Keep your momentum going that way. Got to get a stop here now. Bulldogs, though, with this 22-point lead. Hassan looking to inbound through it right to Jalen Schlegel. Jalen with the steal front court. Ditchin closing from behind. Comes to the left for Nate through his fingertips. And out of bounds. Turnover for West. Just a little bit too much speed there in the front court. Yeah, it's tough, tough in transition to field a bounce pass. And that's uh, you know, that's maybe why 6-8 doesn't lead the lead the fast break in too many uh, too many offenses here. Jalen got out, didn't think he was going to be able to get to the rim himself. Tries to dish it off and just too much on that pass. Ben Angle has returned for West Albany. As Ditchin comes to front court, under three now to go in the first half. Bulldogs leading 36 to 14. Ditchin all the way in, floater in the paint, short. Rebound. Again, wrestled for between two Bulldogs. And now we're going to get a jump ball. Tanner Holland and Nate Sherwood aggressively going after it. And the arrow favoring the Bulldogs. Keaton Bader will return for West. Josh Bryant will depart. Good minutes for Josh. Don't know that he got in the scoring call, but really working hard inside. One of the best defenders on this Bulldog team. Reed in front court for Nate Sherwood on the left wing. Nate to Jalen, left of the blocks, doubled, had it stripped and stolen by Tanner Holland. Off to Wood, and Wood to front court. Both teams in a bit of an offensive drought. Been at 36-14 for a while. 
Baumgartner feeds Wood along the baseline, out to Holland, right elbow, down low Hassan. Tough shot, put it up, no, but a foul. Yeah, Bader just a little bit late on the rotation there. Got the foul, no harm there, but it's going to be going to the line for two. For Bader, his first. Bulldogs seventh. Hassan in the act of shooting, will shoot two. 6-2 senior is Mohamed Hassan. 2.27 to go in the first half. Bulldogs a 36-14 lead. Behind 21 first half points from Chad Sherwood. A little scoring draw. We got to get Chad back in this game. <laughs> yeah. Hassan's free throw is good, and that's the first point in quite a while. About two and a half minutes of game time. Hassan looking for a second to bring the lead back to 20. Or the deficit, I guess, as it were, for the free throw shooter. He has the second one up and good. Hassan got a pair. 36 16, Wes. 2.27 to go, first half. Sawyer Reed gives it up ahead to Nate Sherwood. Nate to the top for Ben Angle, now to the left for Reed. Reed getting a screen from Jalen Schlegel, comes around it to the right. Bounce pass for Angle, into Bader. Tough catch, Bader has to save it into Angle along the sideline. Whipped back out to Reed. And Reed will reset it now to Jalen Schlegel between the circles. Left for Nate Sherwood on the wing. Nate looking back door, now wants to put it on the floor. Dribbles with the right hand and hand checked up top. A non-shooting foul. Team foul number six on Crescent Valley. Bulldogs will take it underneath with exactly two minutes to go in the first half. This has been a long quarter compared to that first one. A few more whistles in this quarter. Bulldogs or Crescent Valley will be in the bonus in the next uh, with, with their next foul. West Albany will be shooting in the bonus. Well, here comes Chad Sherwood. Back out of the lineup. Angle will check out. I got a conduit to coach Zim tonight. My, my <laughs> thoughts are his thoughts. All right. That's well, that, not, well, that worries me. <laughs> that's a little concerning, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Chad Sherwood to Schlegel, now to Reed. Up top, looking for Chad around the screen. Now comes back to the left for Nate. Nate slipped a little, got the handle along the sideline, comes back out to Reed. So got to get Nate back inside. He's got the mismatch over on this side. Yep. They get him, but out on the wing. Now to Jalen at the foul line. Inside for Bader over Hassan. Tough shot. He threw it in oh with my right hand. When Circus things, shot from Bader. When things are working. 38-16 West. Back to the 22-point lead. Minute and a half to play in the second quarter. Kitchen feeds Hassan on the left wing. Reed bodying him up there. Hassan spinning. Foul line extended left. Hands to Wood. Now out to Ditchin. Right side Hassan again behind the arc. Splits a double. Comes all the way through. Has it stripped and stolen by Nate Sherwood. Long ahead to Chad. Trying to chase it down. Look to tap it off to Jalen. And we're kind of punching it out of bounds. <laughs> Chad looks back at his brother and says, who was that too? <laughs> <laughs> Chad points to his chest and says, Me. <laughs> I think we've seen that in the backyard a time or two, probably. Yeah, I think so. Chad comes back out with a minute 12 to go in the first half. Bad angle back in. Ditching in front court to Wood. 105 to play second quarter. 38-16. Bulldogs. Wood on the drive. Maybe took an extra step. Missed the shot off back rim. Holland an offensive rebound. Comes back out to Wood in the corner. He goes along the baseline. No looks at the Holland on the blocks. In the paint. Tough shot. Little fade away. Good for Tanner Holland in the paint. 38-18. Still a 20-point Bulldog lead. 45 seconds to go in the half. Bader to Reed. Now to Nate Sherwood. Now to Ben Angle. Pushing right. Comes back out to Reed with 35 seconds. Yeah, in the and I like this move. Back it back out and see and just work for one here. You don't want to give Crescent Valley anything to anything sort of momentum-wise going into the second half. Don't give even give them a possession. Go for one here. 20 seconds to go. Is it Angle? Has a pass stolen by Ditchin. Up ahead, Baumgartner all the way in. Juggled it in and traveled before the shot. He was losing the handle, and he took an extra step. A big break for the Bulldogs as it takes two easy points off the board. Chad Sherwood, check in for the Bulldogs. Chad Sherwood right back in. Ben Angle out on the offensive end with 15.5 to go in the first half. Bader inbounds it to Reed. Across the timeline with 13 seconds. Hands it off to Chad. Out top with 10. Chad weaving through traffic. In the paint. Teardrop. Curls in. Off front rim. 22-point lead. Three seconds to go in the quarter. Kitchen hustling up. Not going to get a shot off. The horn will sound a first half that belonged to the Bulldogs, and more specifically to Chad Sherwood. 23 points on Tuesday. 23 points in the first half tonight. In the Bulldogs, a 22-point halftime lead. West 40, Crescent Valley 18. We'll take a break and return to 920 K-Show. 
Willamette Community Bank is proud to support local high school sports, music, and scholastic programs. Hi, this is Kevin Thomas, Vice President with Willamette Community Bank. Be part of the team and get behind our schools and our future leaders, serving you with branches in Albany and Lebanon. Willamette Community Bank, service like no other, we promise. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Taking a detour down a gravel road isn't fun for you or your tires. Luckily at Les Schwab, along with great prices, all of our car or pickup tires come with the kind of protection most other places don't give you, like free flat repairs and more. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. The mission of Now Builders is treat every job like it's their only job, no matter how big or small, and they don't stop until their customer is 100% satisfied 100% of the time. Check out their portfolio of fine work at nowbuilders.com. Call Now Builders at 541-926-2858. Figaro's in Albany now has the ultimate super combo and the ultimate super meat, only $16.99 or $17.99 baked. Albany Figaro's in front of Fred Meyer. And ask about their gluten-free crust, 541-924-9303. Unforgettable 920. It is halftime here at West Albany High School. 40 to 18, West Albany with the lead at intermission. I talked about in the pregame the vocab words that I find here at West Albany High School. One of them was mammoth. Now, I said that referred to the game itself. I did not know it would refer to the first half for Chad Sherwood. 23 points in the first half for yeah, Chad. Yeah, he's, he's just feeling it. It's a carryover from the other night. He's really got some momentum going and so fun to watch. You can tell he's just he wants the ball in his hands. He's making things happen, but what he did early was was he got assists. You know, it's the, the offense right now is running through the bigs, but it's touching Chad Sherwood's hands every time down the floor, too. And when he doesn't have the open looks, he's dishing dimes to other guys. It's just he's having himself such a ball game, but it's not just the scoring, which is impressive. Don't get me wrong. 23 points and a half of basketball. I don't think I ever scored 23 in a game. <laughs> I don't think I scored ever. that in my career. <laughs> All right. I, I, I wasn't going to go there. But, <laughs> but, but what he's doing right now is, is he's playing with his head up and, and uh, you know, defensively too. But, but down at the offensive end, he, he's really looking to, to make that extra pass. He's, he found his brother on the beautiful assist for the dunk. It's just, you know, right now he's got it, he's got it clicking, and it is a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, the Bulldogs' offensive efficiency in the first half has been startling, despite the fact that they went about maybe two minutes and 30 seconds, give or take, without a field goal there in the second quarter, still putting up 40 in the first half. A team that they only scored 55 against the first time, and that game went overtime. 40 in the first half here tonight, 25 in the first quarter. And Chad Sherwood obviously getting a lot of the attention with 23, but Jalen Schlegel, I know you mentioned his name a moment ago, another strong first half from Schlegel. Yeah, Jalen and Nate are, are both playing great for the bigs. And what's happened is Crescent Valley, they decided that they were going to shift their focus. They were trying to get out in passing lanes against West, and West was punishing them on the inside. So Crescent Valley, Mike Stare calls a timeout. He brings it back, goes to a little bit more of a matchup zone, backs it in against the bigs a little bit more, which opened up West the, the outside for West. And guess what? Chad Sherwood, splat, splat, splat. Okay, now we've got to go back out. We've got to pay attention to him, gains their respect. Then it's open to the inside again. It's just working this inside-out thing that's got Crescent Valley completely baffled. At the other end, Crescent Valley, they got to the rim early. They were getting some good inside shots. A, a, you know, going against 6'8", 6'8", 6'6". Plus, you know, Chad at 6'3". You've got, you've got all sorts of size going here with West Albany. Crescent Valley was not intimidated by that. They got inside. They just couldn't get a bunch of shots to fall in there. Then Westwood knew that they were coming in started swatting some shots, and, and Crescent Valley really, uh, they, you could tell that their forte is not the outside look. They need to get the mid-range jumpers to have success, and right now they aren't falling, and West isn't giving them anything easy to, to look at. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but uh, West Albany playing the way that they are right now, and Chad Sherwood playing the way that he is. There aren't that many games left in the regular season. We know West is going to play in the postseason one way or the other. With Chad playing like this, the Bulldogs become an entirely different team. Yeah, they're they're playing manly tonight, and Chad, you're right. Chad, when he's feeling it and has that kind of momentum, the the bucket just looks huge to him right now. And and this West Albany team, you know that they want it in his hands. They 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 love the ball movement, but they love it when somebody is, has put this team on their back, and and that's what Chad has done offensively for this team. Now, when you come out for the second half, you cannot be complacent. Crescent Valley will make a run at West, 
and I expect it to happen early. If West Albany can get a couple of early turnovers, turn them into transition buckets, maybe a, you know something exciting, maybe a highlight dunk or, or something like that, they're going to absolutely step on the air hose and Crescent Valley is going to go away. Yeah, they got to keep the pedal down. A 22-point halftime lead for the Bulldogs, 40-18 to 18 over Crescent Valley. The verbiage says before, during, or after. You know now that it's just during or after right now. During or after the game in Albany, you can grab a hot and ready $5 pizza at Little Caesars. That's across from the mall on Geary Street, the new and only Little Caesars in Albany. Let's take a quick timeout. We'll come back. Go to Jeff Kiter with our first half stats. Again, it's West Albany 40, Crescent Valley 18 at halftime on K-Show. Building a home? Remodeling? Spring a leak? Think Brass Plumbing. Prompt quality service at affordable rates. Whatever your plumbing needs, including disasters, count on Brass Plumbing. Call 926-2727. For Brass Plumbing. Looking to save money on lighting fixtures? Larry and Marge Tomlin, owners of J&J Electric, invite you to compare prices, but don't buy until you've seen the high quality and low prices at J&J. Visit their spectacular showroom. The hometown folks at J&J Electric appreciate your business. J&J Electric, South Pacific and 22nd in Albany. 920 KSHO. Welcome back to West Albany High School. Pleased to welcome in Jeff Kiter. I want to make sure he has all the time he needs. So, Jeff, take it away. First half, Chad Sherwood, 23 points, 22-point Bulldog lead. Wayne, I made one small mistake. I gave Chad an extra two points. He actually has 21. Oh, underachiever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but a great, great night. And we'll get to Chad's uh, individual stats in a minute. But as a team, the Bulldogs shot 74% from the field in the first half. They were 12 of 16 from twos. And five of seven from threes. They were one of four from the free throw line. Uh, just an overall fantastic game. Of the uh, 17 made baskets, uh, they had 11 assists on, on those made baskets. So great effort. Conversely, the Crescent Valley Raiders shot 32% from the field. They were eight of 22 from twos and didn't hit a three. They were zero of three from three-point range. Uh, leading the way for the Bulldogs, Again, Chad Sherwood, 21 points. He was four of four from two, four of four from three, and one of one from the free throw line. So a perfect night so far for Chad uh, shooting the basketball. Also pitched in a rebound, three assists, and a couple of steals. Uh, Cody Lahota uh, started tonight, uh, came in, and uh, one of one from three, so he has three points and one assist. Nate Sherwood. Six points and five rebounds. Jalen Schlegel, uh, six points, five rebounds, and three assists. Uh, Josh Bryan had two points. And Keaton Bader had two points uh, in the first half for the Crescent Valley Raiders. Pretty balanced scoring for the Raiders. They were uh, led by... Uh, Three players with four points. Jared Baumgartner had four. Jacob Wood and Tanner Fee. Is it Fees? Fees, yeah. Okay. And uh, Tanner Holland had two. Justin Digen had two. And Muhammad Hassan had uh, two points uh, for the Crescent Valley Raiders. Nobody in real foul trouble. Uh, Chad Sherwood has two. Uh, a few other Bulldogs have one. And then uh, Crescent Valley, uh, no really, uh, not really any foul trouble either. So... Great first half for the Bulldogs. Uh, I think the, the pink uniforms are doing them so good, at, yeah. at least so far in the first half, and hopefully they can keep it going. Hope so. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. Yeah, West may want to keep those pink uniforms for the remainder of the season if this one continues this way. West Albany 40, Crescent Valley 18 at the half. We'll take a timeout and back with the third quarter at 920 Case Show. The short drive to Corvallis will save you time and money. This is Steve Buckner from Wilson Motors, inviting you to experience the notable difference at Wilson Motors, 5th and Buchanan in Corvallis. Check us out at saveatwilson.com. Need extra money? H&R Block offers the Avril Advance, a line of credit up to $1,000 that you can start using today. No W-2 required. Stop by a participating office to apply. Or call 1-800-HR-BLOCK to learn more. H&R Block, Avril Advance, line of credit offer through H&R Block Bank. Member FDIC, a participating office, subject to credit approval, free supply. See HR Block slash Avril Advance for details. 2012 HRB Tax Group Incorporated offer January 15, 2013. OVTP, B-15-15-0. Hi, this is Serena at your neighborhood H&R Block in Albany, Lebanon, Corvallis. Call us today at 541-928-6432 and see what it means to never settle for less when it comes to your taxes. Making life easier and more productive, that's what Lynn Benton Tractor can do for you. And it all begins by discovering how the full line of Kubota equipment can help. Lynn Benton Tractor, we're still doing business the American way. Highway 99E, Tangent. 
Unforgettable 920. Set to start the third quarter here at West Albany High School. Ryan Pitts, Wally Orderman, Jeff Kider here with you tonight. Video feed available on WAHSTV.com. And our thanks to the West Albany AV Club for hooking up the video cameras tonight. Hope that the audio coming through sounds good. It's been a good one so far. A couple of big highlights in the first half. The Nate Sherwood dunk, the four threes, 21 points from Chad Sherwood. Third quarter underway, CV in position. Possession, rather, working down to our left. As Tanner Fees has a pass tipped right away and stolen by Chad Sherwood. Can't teach height. <laughs> I'll tell you, what a, <laughs> you, you, you can't, uh, uh, it, it's hard to estimate how, just how long those arms are. Jalen Schlegel getting, tipping, that, tipping that pass. Excuse me. Chad Sherwood trying to come through a double team. Some aggressive defense and a foul called on Crescent Valley. They'll get Jacob Wood for his third. First on the Raiders here in the third quarter. Bulldogs will inbound underneath. Sawyer Reed set to play it in. Same five that started the game on the floor here to start the third quarter for West. Reed lobs it underneath for Jalen Schlegel, working it on Holland. Little sky hook short. Rebound to Holland. Up to Ditchen on the run straight away. Crossing over on Reed into the paint. Step through on Schlegel. Rejected by Jalen Schlegel. Emphatically right into Bill Draper, who takes a little walk along the baseline. <laughs> Bill, the official down there on the baseline, had that one come right into his chest. Like a volleyball spike from Jalen. Inbound through the hands of Holland. Picked up by Chad Sherwood. On the run. Chad all the way. Scoop shot, no. Cody Lahota there trying to clean it up. Blocked from behind by Baumgartner. Big block at one end. Now a big block at the other end. Baumgartner spiked it away from Lahota. Want to be able, when you've got that two-on-one, to be able to put that ball in the, in the hoop. Bulldogs retain possession, though. We came down to Jalen. Underneath to Nate, lays oh, it in. Nice boy. touch pass. Jalen Schlegel to Nate Sherwood for the deuce. Everybody in the gym thought Jalen was going up for that turnaround jumper there. Dumps it off to Nate for the easy two. 42-18. Bulldogs by 24. One minute gone in the third. Ditchin out to Wood. Just inside the foul line. Comes back out to Ditchin. Way out on the right wing. Screen from Holland. Ditchin uses it. Pushes to the left block. Now out to Baumgartner. Good close off by Cody Lahota. Baumgartner straight away using a fees screen, dancing behind it, bumped into his own man. Looks for some space. Now going to pull a deep three from straight away. No, but we're going to get a foul and a double foul, I think, you are going to go against West and CV. Let's see who they get. Tanner Fees and Chad Sherwood. So a double foul. Could be three on each of them, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And yeah, then they go to the arrow, so it will belong to West Albany. Only costly, really, because it's Chad Sherwood's third foul. But the Bulldogs lead by 24 here in the third quarter. Not a call you see a lot. And I missed the contact. I missed what was going on. I, I, yeah, it was off the ball, which is where our, our eyes were located. Maybe on the TV side you saw that. Sawyer Reed brings it into front court. Pushing right, gives to Chad Sherwood just in front of the Bulldog bench. Started there by Baumgartner. Get out of the blocks for Schlegel. Double. Schlegel looks to push it into the paint. Little fadeaway jumper. Short. Chad keeps it alive. Tips it out to Nate on the wing. Into the corner for Chad. Going to fire a three from there. Front rim. No good. Rebound Tanner Holland. Up to Ditchin on the run. Looking to get through the body of Chad Sherwood. And he's going to be fouled by Chad on the way up. And they're going to give him two shots. And that was definitely not a shot that he was taking. That was a pass. Yeah, that's four on Chad Sherwood. So he will have to sit for a while here with 6.13 to go in the third. Really wanted to see him stay out of foul troubles, just see what he'd be able to see if he could just light some more up from the outside. It's been fun to watch, hasn't it? Missed his first two shots in the third quarter, and now is going to have to come to the bench. Yeah, as Ditchin's first free throw is good. Josh Bryant in. Chad Sherwood out. So the Bulldogs left with Reed, Lahota, Nate Sherwood, Jalen Schlegel, Josh Bryant. Second free throw coming for Ditchin. High arcing shot. Good. Strange release from behind his yeah. head. But he put in both. 42 to 20, 6-10 to play in the third quarter. Sawyer Reed, right-hand dribble just in front of the Bulldog bench. Pivoting on Ditchin. Now works his way to the left. Feeds Bryant just behind the foul line. Looking to go high-low for Nate Sherwood. And spiked away from him and stolen. Justin Ditchin with it. Long up ahead for Wood, all the way along the baseline. Wood into traffic. Goes up, missed the shot, altered by Bryant. Out of bounds it goes. Off West Albany. It'll stay with CV. And Isaiah Edwards will check in for the first time for West during the stoppage. 
Jalen Schlegel out. Edwards' first appearance of the night. Just a quick break for Jalen. Get his legs under him. Wood inbound fees. Quick jumper off the window. No good. And a rebound to Lahota. Hands it off to Reed, who brings to front court. Around a Bryant screen to the right. Reed now spins his way back to the left, looking for Lahota. It's tipped out of bounds by Baumgartner. 5.36 to go, third quarter. West continuing to lead big, 42-20. to 20. Crescent, Crescent Valley a little bit more aggressive defensively, now trying to create some turnovers. West be well served. They get the ball into the high post like they were there at the end of the first quarter. Good things are happening. Reed lobs it in for Nate along the baseline. It's tipped out of bounds off his hands, or off a CV, rather. Nate had it in his hands. That was deflected out of bounds. So it'll stay with West, 529 to go in the third. Cody Lahoda set to inbound it for the Bulldogs. Gets it into Reed. Ditch in a good closeout, preventing Reed from taking the three. Sawyer cross court for Lahoda. He'll take a three and hit it. So Cody Lahoda two for two from outside. Boy, it looks really comfortable doing it too. No hesitation in that release. And you may remember he really should be three for three. He had one taken off the boards with an offensive foul earlier. Ditchin all the way in. Now back to Holland. Fake the three. Steps back. Goes back to the corner for Ditchin. Now Ditchin along the baseline over Bryant with the teardrop. Will not stay down. In and out. Fees strong board in between three pink jerseys. Goes back up and gets fouled. Strong effort from Tanner Fees. Not the tallest young man. Listed at 6'2", but he's a big guy. Yeah, and he rebounds with a lot of heart. You know, that when you're undersized, you have to do some things with your body to be able to get in position to get those rebounds. And he's got a lot of desire to get in there and get those boards. Foul on Lahota, his second. Bulldogs third. Fees shooting two, and the first one is short. No good. Bulldogs leading by 25. And that is their biggest advantage here. 4.57 to go in the third quarter. One more free throw for Fees. Sets, releases, and misses. Rebounded by Lahota. Bulldog ball, number five to go in the third. So you read to the left wing for Lahota. Quickly in for Isaiah Edwards. Posting on the left block. Backing his way down. Little fadeaway. Too strong. Rebound Baumgartner. Baumgartner lost the dribble. It goes right to Holland. His teammate, fortunately, was behind him. Now to Wood. And Wood will cross the timeline. Wood around to Holland, screen to the right wing. Hands it off to Fees. Fees to the top, deflected by Lahota into the hands of Holland. Holland scoops it back out to Baumgartner. Baumgartner up top, good D from Lahota. So it goes to Holland, now in the corner for Fees. Back to Holland on a ball fake. Could not lose Lahota still. Into the corner for Wood. Around front to the baseline, through Sherwood, no but a foul. Nate Sherwood called for the foul with the body. And Jacob Wood will be at the line for two. Boy, really got bailed out there, too. Nice Off-balance shot, and Nate, I don't think he expected that, that shot to go up in the way that it did. Maybe just caught a little bit out of position here. Four team fouls on the Bulldogs, but uh, I think is that the third team foul that's been a shooting foul for Crescent Valley in this half, I believe. And Wood cannot convert the first free throw. Ricardo Gonzalez back in for the Raiders. Justin Ditchin will check out. And now Cameron Dixon will check in for West Albany, his first appearance. Replacing Cody Lahoda. Good minutes tonight. Really good minutes. In the starting lineup was Cody Lahoda. Six points and very strong defense for the Bulldogs. One more free throw for Wood. On its way and good. 45 21, West Albany. 4.15 to go in the third. Sawyer Reed quickly to front court for West. Still no full court pressure by Crescent Valley. Reed directing traffic, gets it into Nate Sherwood on the right box. Quick turnaround, too strong, rebounded by Wood. Raiders with the ball as Wood comes to front court and pulls up the dribble. Comes to the left for Fees. Fees, he's going to launch a three. That's off to the right, no good. Cam Dixon chases down the rebound. Cameron up to Reed, Coach Zimmerman yelling, let's go. Looking to get the Bulldogs to push. Reed does, now pulls back on the right wing. Looks in again for Nate. Stripped away by Wood, out of bounds. Good D by Wood. He's given up a lot of size to Nate Sherwood. Given up 10 inches, but did a good job to wrestle it away and out of bounds. Yeah, that's a tall order for him. Unintended there, but, but you know, really has done a good job down low. He, he's, uh, Nate's getting his stuff, but, but uh, Wood really has been solid. Reed lobbed into Nate again, matched up on Wood, puts it in with a foul. Absorbing the contact. 
They're going to get Ricardo Gonzalez with the bump, and Nate able to muscle it up and in a chance for three. That's just a strong play right there. Had a bad angle on it. Had his back turned to the basket, but still was able to side turn. Wasn't square to the basket, but strong enough to be able to get through that contact and put it in for two. Nate's free throw back rim, no good. A rebound to Fees. 47-21 Bulldogs, 26-point lead with three and a half to go in the third quarter. Wood to Baumgartner. Looking for help, holding it 30 feet away. Now gives to Gonzalez, guarded by Reed to the right for Holland. Holland sweeping ball fakes as he puts it down with the left hand. Now gets doubled up top, hounded by Cameron Dixon. Good D there. Rid of it to Baumgartner, now to Wood in the corner. Bouncing it back, lazily stolen by Jalen Schlegel. Jalen on the run, all the way in. Had it, well, they say stripped? No, not stripped. And uh, I think Bill yep, Draper's yep, going to overrule yep, yep, this. There, they are. That's good refereeing right there. They initially signaled ball to Crescent Valley, but it was stripped away from Schlegel. It'll stay with West. Yeah, you can see one referee too close to the play right there, and the, and the referee that had the better angle comes over and, and, uh, and, and corrects it. Really good coordination between the stripes. Sawyer Reed will inbound it. Up top to Nate Sherwood. Again, Jacob Wood meets him. Sherwood puts it on the floor, drops it down low for Jalen. Got his man in the air. Scoops it to the corner. A three on the way for Cam Dixon. Back rim, no good. Rebound tipped out long and chased down by Wood. On the run comes Wood, weaving through the lane, floats it up and in with the right hand. Aggressive drive from Jacob Wood. 47-23, quick outlet for Dixon. Dixon in, and an offensive foul. Cameron a little bit out of control as he got underneath. Just got himself too far under the rim. End up calling for an offensive foul. Almost thought that might be a no call right there. You know, there was contact there, but really, you know, the shot didn't go in. Defender still moving. Yeah. You make a good point. And for a moment there, I thought that was going to be the call. The whistle was just a beat late. But it is on Dixon. His first. Bulldogs fifth. As Jesse Berkey has checked in for the first time for West Albany. Cameron Dixon checks out. Berkey, Bader, Schlegel, Nate Sherwood, and Reed. That's your five for West Albany. Dixon brings it into front court. 240 to go in the third. West Albany leading 47-23. Dixon. Kicks to the corner for Holland, nearly thrown away, saved up top, stolen by Berkey, up ahead to Sawyer Reed, all the way in, off the window, tried to get it to Jalen, it's followed up by Nate, he can't hit, but he got fouled. Sawyer Reed pointing to Jalen Schlegel saying, I was putting that off the window for you, big guy. <laughs> and, and they were trailing a little bit too closely for that to be able to happen. Put up there a little bit hard, but uh, Nate, I tell you, West always running the floor offensively there in transition very well. Any number of players could have gotten that that put back. But Nate uh, draws the foul, goes to the line here for two. Four team fouls now on Crescent Valley. Fortunately, Nate Sherwood was right behind Jalen Schlegel there to clean it up, and his first free throw is good. Ben Angle in for West. Sawyer Reed will check out. And with the margin of 25, this may be very much like the other night where we won't see the starters for the rest of the night. Nate Sherwood and Jalen Schlegel still out there, but... Maybe not for much longer. Yeah, and I, I think probably we'll see them maybe a couple minutes into the fourth quarter and then see a little bit more uh, liberal rotation coming off the bench. Now Nate hits his free throw and will check out. Cameron Dixon replaces him. So the only starter still out there is Schlegel. Ben Engel, Jesse Berkey, Cameron Dixon, Keaton Bader flank him. As Trenton Linden has checked in for the first time for the Raiders, Muhammad Hassan is out there, Ricardo Gonzalez, Fees, and Ditchin. As Fees takes it up top, guarded by Dixon with 2.15 to go in the quarter. Hassan in the corner. Lost his footing. Goes to the floor. How is that not a walk? Goes underneath the Fees. Fees is blocked from behind by Bader. A foul on Bader. Mohamed Hassan lost his balance, went to his knees. Not quite sure how that's not a walk, but... <laughs> it will be free throws coming. Foul on Keaton Bader. Yeah, you, you're always taught that once, once you go down, if you, if you try to get up, then they're going to call that a travel. I think what what uh, what the referee is saying to Coach Zimmerman is that he didn't that he didn't use the ball to try and get up that he didn't have both hands on it when he tried to get up which would be a double dribble right. Fees at the foul line. First one is short. No good. That was the sixth team foul on West Albany Raiders with four two oh seven to go in the third quarter. Bulldogs have led throughout. They trailed two nothing. Went on a nine zero run and it has not been close since. Tanner Fees hits the second. 49-24 Bulldogs coming down on two minutes to play in the third quarter. Jesse Berkey in the corner with it. Had it knocked away. Gets it right back. And he's hand-checked and fouled by Gonzalez. 
much to the dismay of Ricardo Gonzalez, but he got Berkey across the arms really twice. They called the second one. And now Brady Young will check in for the Bulldogs, his first appearance. He replaces Jalen Schlegel. And so now the question again becomes, will we see the starters again? Because yes. all five are now on the bench. Yes, we will. I guarantee yes. it. Okay. Oh, guarantee. I guarantee it. I'm Joe Namath. <laughs> ben Angle inbounds to Cameron Dixon. Puts it on the floor. Lobs it into Brady Young. Got man in the air. Puts it up. No, but a foul. Good job by Brady Young with the pump fake. Buying some time, and he'll get two free throws out of it. And good penetration by Cam Dixon and the recognition. Brady Young had his man pinned on his hip. Brady with a good over-the-shoulder catch. Chance here to get a couple at the line. Foul goes against Trenton Linden, his first. Brady Young's free throw, no good. Back rim. I should point out, since we do have a video portion of the program, Mike Stair adhering to the pink out here tonight. He's got a pink tie ah, to go along with the white shirt and black slacks. So good for him. Good recognition of what West Albany, the, the awareness they're trying to portray tonight. Brady Young misses the second free throw also, and the rebound chased down in the corner by Ditchin. 49-24, West Albany, 148 to go third quarter. Ditchin crossing over up top on Angle, kicks it to the corner. Hassan's going to launch a three, too strong. Tipped up and in, though, by Baumgartner, crashing in from the weak side. Good athletic play. Bulldogs didn't get a body on him. 49-26, West. Brady Young holding, now gives to Berkey. Guarded by Gonzalez, poked away by Gonzalez. Jesse got it back. Dribbles just inside the arc. Scoops it into Brady Young in traffic. Goes up, can't hit. Rebound loose and pulled out by Baumgartner for Crescent Valley. Baumgartner accelerating inside. Tough shot, wild shot, out of control. Strong off the window. And West clears the rebound. Now Ben Engel will bring it into front court. I don't know what Jared Baumgartner was trying to accomplish there. He really just threw the ball strong off the glass. Now it's Berkey. Sweeping it through on Gonzalez, shoveling it underneath to Brady Young inside again. This time he lays it in. Great position by Brady. 51-26 Bulldogs, under a minute in the third. Ditch it underneath the Baumgartner all alone, and he lays this one up and in. Finding a little seam inside, 51-28. Angle to Young. Young to the cutting camera. Dixon, he lays it in. Good back cut and a good find by Brady Young. Dixon the layup. Oh, man. What vision by Brady. Cam Dixon set his man up perfectly to get that back door. 28 seconds in the third. Bulldogs by 25. Gonzalez out top to Baumgartner. Now off to Ditchin in front of the Bulldog band. Driving along the baseline. Kicks to the corner. Gonzalez free for three. In and out and in again. A three for Ricardo Gonzalez. A friendly roll for Ricardo. 53-31. Ten seconds in the quarter. Van Angle. Directing some traffic. Guarded by Ditchin. Pressure defense close to a five count and throws it away. Through the hands of Berkey and out of bounds. One second to go in the third. Good defense up top by Ditchin, really forcing that turnover. Tanner Holland checks in. Trent Linden is out. And the Raiders have to go the length of the floor in one second. Baumgartner with Keaton Bader right in his face asking the official on the baseline if he can clear some space. Bader, arms outstretched as Baumgartner. Looks for something, lobs it in, stolen by Ben Angle. He'll float it up short at the buzzer. End of three here tonight from West Albany. A dominating performance from the Bulldogs. West 53, Crescent Valley 31. We'll come back for the fourth at K Show. Serving the Mid Valley for 37 years with collision, mechanical, glass, and RV repair, Pacific Auto Services is now Stavros Auto Services. Same people, same commitment to excellence. You've got their name on it. Call Stavros Auto Services at 541 926 7248. If you'd like to do it yourself or need helpful advice doing it, your neighborhood Ace Hardware and Contractor Center can help. Economy Supply Building Center has been that helpful place for over 58 years. Economy Supply Building Center, where Highway 34 becomes Tangent Street in Lebanon. Need some electrical work in your home or business, but it just seems like too small of a job to call the pros? No matter what the job, call City and Suburban Electric. Proud to be a contributing member of our community, City and Suburban Electric. Call 451-5609. Lassen RV at Albany has the new RV bottles on the lot now, ready for you to buy. Lassen RV service department has a new truckload of parts and accessories on sale just in time for fall fix-up. From changing a light bulb to rebuilding your entire RV, no job is too big or too small for Lassen RV at Albany. Where friends send their friends. Unforgettable 920. Back here at West Albany High School, start of the fourth quarter. 
Thanks for joining us tonight on 920K Show and on WAHSTV.com. Our first audio-video coordination between K Show and the students here at West Albany. Our thanks to them for the video feed tonight. 53-31 Bulldogs as we start the fourth, and the teardrop is good by Justin Ditchin. Floating through the paint to put it in. 53-33, lead still 20, but this is the closest that the Raiders have been in a while. So the Bulldogs get the starting five back out there. Jalen Schlegel spinning his way in, putting it in with the left hand. <laughs> he's saying, no, you can't defend me. <laughs> that little nod he's got. It's like a, 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 a Dikembe Mutombo kind of <laughs> look to him as he heads down the floor. Ditchin bouncing it through traffic, knocked away by West Albany. Yeah, if Jalen starts doing the finger wag, I think he's going to get some technicals. <laughs> like Dikembe Mutombo. Yeah. They're bringing that back. Have you seen the commercial? Yes, with I have. Oh, I yeah, love yeah, that. That's so funny. Love that commercial. Ditchin up top, guarded by Reed. 7.20 to go in the game. Bulldogs by 22. And that third quarter was a push. Same yep. differential, 22 points. 13 points, 13 points apiece in that third. As a cutting, Mohammed Hassan will lay it in with the right hand. Ryan Dunn. Now, I don't think that's Ryan Dunn. It's, the ball is lobbed into Jalen, who misses inside. There's a number 50 on the floor for Crescent Valley. Ryan Dunn is number 50 on the JV roster, but he's listed at 6'2", and this young man out here is not 6'2". As Justin Ditchin comes to front court, goes right for Baumgartner. Baumgartner into the corner for Hassan. Hassan all the way in, put it in with a foul. Mohamed Hassan with some good minutes tonight for the Raiders. Yeah, and what, what we're seeing right now, and I didn't want to say this earlier, Ryan, is the Bulldogs had a huge lead against South Albany in that, in that game, the rivalry game. And then South started making a fourth quarter run at them. 6.44 to go here. I, not panic time. Bulldogs are up 18. But we've seen some productive offensive time now by Crescent Valley on, the, on this end of the floor and some quick shots by West on the other end. Got to be careful. Just got to keep playing your game and keep being aggressive. The lead is down to 17 as we're going to get a foul in front court that will put Chad Sherwood at the line for a one and one. Jared Baumgartner called for the foul. Crescent Valley, seven. So Chad with the four fouls will be at the line here. One and one, 6.39 to go. 17 point lead for West Albany. Trent Linden is back in for the Raiders. Jared Baumgartner checks out. That's just the first foul on Baumgartner who has been nowhere near as productive as he was the first time these teams played. Chad Sherwood, shooting one and one. Chad Sherwood at the foul line, looking for his first points of the second half after 21 in the first half, and he gets it. First one good. Let's see if we can maybe put uh, Jeff to work, finding out who the number 50 is out there for Crescent Valley. Try to get the name of that young man, clearly up off the JV roster. That would be Joe Casey. Is it Joe Casey? I wondered if it was. Son of Oregon State head baseball coach Pat Casey. As Joe gets it off to Ditchin, and Ditchin, oh, high dribble, just able to keep his hand on top of it, close to a carry, as Ditchin works at the front court. 57-38 West Albany. It's Chad Sherwood guarding Joe Casey up top. Ditchin pushing his way right through traffic. High arcing shot over Nate Sherwood. Bounces out. Rebounded underneath by Lyndon, who lost it to Casey. Casey up top to Hassan. Hassan, a little teardrop underneath, short, pulled down by Linden, who goes up and gets fouled. Raiders a little bit more scrappy here in the second half. Yeah, they're the aggressors right now, and, and as they need to be, they're down 19 in this game, but, but uh, West Albany, I don't think they're, they're handling this very well right now. They need to go back to what got them to this point, and that's imposing their game on Crescent Valley. Linden at the foul line. First one up, around, and off. No good. Very strong. So Joe Casey, five foot six freshman out on the floor. We, of course, remember Brett Casey, another son of Pat, his time at Crescent Valley. Very good basketball and football, or a baseball player, rather, of course, as you might expect with his dad. Son missing on both. 57 38. West a 19-point lead, six minutes to go. Chad Sherwood gets it up this top. This is going up. Uh, deep three for Chad. Bingo. Straight away. Deep three. Timeout, Wes. It will be a full. Chad Sherwood is fifth three of the night. The Bulldogs push the lead back to 22, and we'll step away for a moment. Coming back to 920 K-Show. Join the fun at the Albany Athletic Club. Group fitness classes from low-impact dance to traditional circuit training, plus racquetball and more. Watch your waistline shrink and your health improve every day. Start now at the Albany Athletic Club on Hickory next to Tom's Garden Center. 
Albany Burgerville is now featuring the Ham Havarti Sandwich, all natural diamond ranch ham layered with melted Havarti cheese on a toasted hoagie roll and the chocolate hazelnut milkshake. Pick up an Albany Burgerville rewards card now. Cash for every dollar spent. Albany Burgerville, fresh, local, sustainable. You will come out a winner at Power Honda. Their talented staff will show you how easy it is to get the vehicle you want and the payment you need. Check out MyPowerHonda.com. Call 928-0122 or just go in to Power Honda. Highway 20 East of I-5 in Albany, your Honda Superstore. We're Linco Federal Credit Union. Keep your money in Lynn County with Linco Federal Credit Union. Enjoy a visit with one of our friendly staff at a neighborhood branch near you today. Linco Federal Credit Union in Albany, Lebanon, and Sweet Home. In Lynn, you're in. Albany Grocery Outlet Bargain Market across from the Heritage Mall has Senior Day, the first Tuesday of every month. $2 off every purchase of $15 or more. Albany Grocery Outlet Bargain Market, 100% satisfaction guaranteed across from the Heritage Mall with bargains on the brands you trust. 920 KSHO. Out of the timeout, Crescent Valley getting a handful of opportunities at the rim. A couple of blocks by West and then finally a jumper good from Tanner Holland. So it is a 60 to 40 West Albany lead, 5:32 to go in the game. But I like that defensive possession a little bit better by by West Albany. They challenged every shot and really made Crescent Valley work for for what they got there—a little mid-range jumper, which Crescent Valley always so good with. Bulldogs with the 20-point lead, 60 to 40, 5:32 to go. Real quickly, want to say hi to John Birchfield, who had to leave to go scoop ice cream. Ah, he said he's listening to us though. All right. Chad Sherwood along the baseline, scooping it underneath, loose on the floor, picked up by Crescent Valley and Trent Linden. 20-point Bulldog lead, 5.22 to play here tonight. Joe Casey, the freshman, out on the right wing for Crescent Valley, guarded by Schlegel, goes to the corner for Tanner Fees. Weak side help. Sorry, I was being a coach <laughs> there. <laughs> That's good radio. Out to wait. It's on TV tonight, though, so you're okay. Yes, up top, the ball is knocked away off Crescent Valley. Good D by Nate Sherwood to swat it off the leg of Joe Casey and out of bounds. Not sure if we mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, though, but Crest, or, uh, West Albany with the JV and freshman wins tonight in boys basketball. And the girls' varsity for West winning right before this game, so it's been a good night for the Bulldogs. Continuing here in the varsity game, a game West Albany has led throughout. They lead by 20. So the Bulldogs try to go inside to Chad Sherwood. He's held on the catch. And we'll go to the line for a one and one with 451 left. Chad Sherwood with 26 points tonight. That is his season high. It's his sixth game of 20 or more, second consecutive. And it eclipses the 25 that he scored against Lebanon back on January the 11th. Don't often get to see Chad post up down at the low block there. Had the little high low thing going. Usually it's it's Jalen to Nate. That time Chad, the great position, draws the foul. No good on the first. Misses the free throw, exasperated as he comes back up the floor. Jacob Wood into front court for Crescent Valley. 4.40 to go. Bulldogs leading by 20, and I think Chad Sherwood. No. Oh, an offensive foul. Offensive foul on Crescent Valley. I thought they were going to foul Chad out as he tried to sell the charge right at midcourt. This will go against Tanner Fees, and the Raider fans voicing their displeasure. Mike Stair puts his hands on his cheeks. He's also frustrated. That's a really tough call to make and an instantaneous one there. That could have gone either way. Probably wouldn't have drawn a lot of it would have drawn argument from both from either side here. Tanner Fees fouling out of this game. Is that right? No, the, now they called it on Ricardo Gonzalez. And that is his fifth. Yeah, no, I don't I don't Ricardo saying that was on so. me? Yeah, no. they're getting yeah, 30 zero. Three zero. Yeah. So it is Fees, not Gonzalez. And confusion abounding here as they will get the proper players on the floor. Tanner Holland had come into the game, now comes back to the scorer's table. Now will retreat to his bench, and Josh Bryant will inbound it for West. Okay, 4.39 to go, Bulldogs by 20. And, and they, got, they got Tanner Fees. Tanner Fees is fourth foul. Yeah, okay, yep. I was thinking maybe he had fouled out as well, or instead of... <laughs> So it's Sawyer Reed who comes to front court and hands it off to Chad Sherwood around Gonzalez to the baseline. Shot too strong, rebounded underneath by Crescent Valley and Tanner Fees. Well, the Bulldogs need to turn and shoot back at that rim down to the left because that's where Chad was really feeling it. A little bit colder here in the second half. Still 26 on the night. Phenomenal night for Sherwood. As Wood dribbles up top for Crescent Valley, using a lot of time on the possession with the Raiders down 20. 
and 4.07 to play. Fees lost the handle into the hands of Chad. Nate was sprinting up the floor, screaming for the ball, and Chad will bring it slowly up to Reed. Reed guarded by Joe Casey. Gets it to Nate on the right wing. Nate up top for Chad between the circles. Whipped left for Reed. Reed down to Schlegel. Left of the block. Spinning on Linden. Going all the way in. With the fake. Comes back out to Chad. Open for three. You bet. From the right wing. Another one for Chad. He's got six threes tonight. And 13 in his last two games. <laughs> and 29 for the game. Unbelievable. 63 to 40. I can't remember the last time we saw a 30-point score. Oh, and we're not going to. <laughs> Here come a fresh five. The Bulldogs need a steal and a layup here for Chad. Fees, Prusher with no whistle this time. Out to Wood. Out to Gonzalez. He's going to fire a three. Back rim, no good. A rebound to Reed, and we could see it yet if Chad Sherwood can get a bucket on this possession. Reed's saying Chad put it up. Into the corner for Nate. Nate along the baseline. Goes up and misses the layup. Out of bounds. It will go to West Albany, but the starters will be done, and they should get a big round of applause. I tell you what, for one of the very few times, I am going to cheer on press row for the Bulldog Five tonight. A tremendous job from that starting unit. Yes, the Bulldogs hold a 23-point lead. Ben Engel, Brady Young, Cameron Dixon, Jesse Berkey, Isaiah Edwards out on the floor. Really good effort by that first five, for the, by the first seven there with, uh, when you consider you know Josh Bryant coming off the bench. Boy, start Pete to finish. Bader, it, really, it really was. It was a great effort tonight. Three minutes to go. Bulldogs by 23. Berkey into Edwards. Knocked away from him out of bounds. West will keep it. Obviously, it starts with Chad in the 29 points, the six threes. But just the energy level was so much higher tonight. As Cameron Dixon, great look on the inbound from Berkey, and Dixon puts it in. Oh, boy. Mike Stair wants a timeout. It'll be a 30 We'll stay here, and I'll read a couple of spots. Farmers Insurance is the right choice for auto insurance, home, life, business, boat, and RV insurance, and a whole lot more. Your local farmers experts are Roland Brower and Tim Finley on 9th across from Mark Thomas Motors in Albany. Go Bulldogs! And for over 50 years, Mega Foods has been offering the best quality and taste, more than just a supermarket, also a good neighbor, Mega Foods in Lebanon and Albany. 2.50 to go tonight, 65-40 to 40 West Albany with the lead. They will get the win to go to 13-7, and 7-3 seven, seven and three in the mid will limit, and they will tie Crescent Valley for second in the league. And as we said before the game, really their final chance to improve their power ranking, and this is going to help. Going to play some teams that are quite a ways down in the power rankings here in, in games coming up. This West Albany team did what they needed to do tonight against a good Crescent Valley team, a team ahead of them in the standings, and West just took it to them. Real proud of them, and, and uh, be a lot better taste Going, going forward and going into this weekend where they maybe get to relax a little bit. Yeah, and then back at it on Tuesday, Woodburn will come here to West Albany High School. We'll have it for you on K-Show, of course, Tuesday night, 7 p.m. tip times. Gonzalez drives in the paint, finger roll, too strong. Rebound comes down to Ben Angle on the run. Up ahead, it's Isaiah Edwards. Isaiah powers it down with two hands. In the open floor, Isaiah Edwards with a two-hand dunk. <laughs> and that gets them on their feet again here at West Albany High School. Oh, man, did he get out in front. Elevation, son. 67 to 40. The explosiveness of Isaiah Edwards as Linden puts it up too strong. Rebounded by Cameron Dixon. Two big dunks tonight. That one was impressive. Two-hand throwdown from Isaiah Edwards. He now gets it on the blocks. Out to Berkey. He wants a three. Why not? A triple for Berkey. Well, it's getting away now with two minutes left. 70 to 40, West Albany. <laughs> Joe Casey on a handoff to Gonzalez. Ben Angle with him. Gonzalez gets it back to Casey. Casey's going to launch a deep three, left hand three that's short. Rebound to Dixon. Uh, Dixon lost it. Gonzalez chases it down to Linden. And Linden will bring it back up top. 135 to go. Joe Casey will step into another three. This one is an air ball off to the right. And out of bounds, it will go to West Albany. With 1.30 left, 70 to 40. Well, Crescent Valley has lost twice to Silverton by 18. They lost in the first game of the season to Churchill by 62. But nobody else has done to them this year what West Albany has done tonight. Yeah, Crescent Valley, when you think about it, a five-point winner over Corvallis. Pass to the top, deflected, nearly stolen, kicked around now, and here is a kick ball. And I think it's going to belong to West Albany. Last kick by Mohammed Hassan. Yep. 
both both were inadvertent kicks, yeah. but I think you have to call it on that one. One was kicked by Edwards, then kicked back by Hassan. And how about Isaiah Edwards oh. getting his first dunk of the season? Oh. And guess what? It's on TV. Yeah. And it was vicious. Isaiah Edwards, six foot four sophomore. There will be more of those in our broadcast in future. As Jesse Berkey takes the inbound in backcourt. Tried to whip it inside for Young. Deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with West with 110 left. Now, this is one that Coach Zimmerman can feel pretty good about tonight. This was a payback night for West Albany, no doubt about it. And they asserted themselves from the start. The inbound comes to Brady Young. Up top for Ben Angle, being hounded by Casey. Fires left corner. Berkey, another three on the way for Jesse. This one's too strong. Rebound spiked out of bounds, belonging to Crescent Valley, with one minute on the game clock. Bulldogs, their biggest lead of the night right now, 30, with one minute to play. Joe Casey into front court, working with a left-hand dribble, guarded by Ben Angle, uses a high screen from Holland, comes around it to the right, window wiping up top. Now comes around to Linden screen and gets it to Gonzalez. Gonzalez trying to go around Dixon. Now uses a Holland screen to the top, bounces it to Casey, around to Hassan. He'll launch a three. That's short, rebounded by Cameron Dixon. Stripped away from him into the hands of Angle, into front court with a half minute to go. Angle underneath for Edwards, through his hands and out of bounds. And Isaiah will tap his chest yeah. and say, my fault. Ben Angle saw him coming, coming loose and knew that he was going to be open down there. Isaiah looking at his spot and not able to uh, get his eyes focused there on the pass before it got to him. 23 seconds to go tonight. A very impressive Bulldog victory over Crescent Valley. As Mohammed Hassan to the baseline. Tough arcing shot. Good. Over Edwards and Young. Mohammed Hassan. The senior. We did not see him play, I don't believe, in the first matchup. But he's been good tonight. High energy minutes as the final seconds will tick away. Ben Angle in front court cradles the ball with four, with three, and the ovation will begin. A very impressive pink out performance by West Albany tonight. Head to toe in pink are the Bulldogs. And they come out with a big win tonight over Crescent Valley, 70 to 42 over the Raiders. We'll come back and wrap this one up at 9.20 K-Show. Willamette Community Bank is proud to support local high school sports, music, and scholastic programs. Hi, this is Kevin Thomas, Vice President with Willamette Community Bank. Be part of the team and get behind our schools and our future leaders, serving you with branches in Albany and Lebanon. Willamette Community Bank, service like no other, we promise. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Taking a detour down a gravel road isn't fun for you or your tires. Luckily at Les Schwab, along with great prices, all of our car or pickup tires come with the kind of protection most other places don't give you, like free flat repairs and more. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. The mission of Now Builders is treat every job like it's their only job, no matter how big or small, and they don't stop until their customer is 100% satisfied 100% of the time. Check out their portfolio of fine work at nowbuilders.com. Call Now Builders at 541-926-2858. The short drive to Corvallis will save you time and money. This is Steve Buckner from Wilson Motors, inviting you to experience the notable difference at Wilson Motors, 5th and Buchanan in Corvallis. Check us out at saveatwilson.com. Figaro's in Albany now has the ultimate super combo and the ultimate super meat, only $16.99 or $17.99 baked. Albany Figaro's in front of Fred Meyer. And ask about their gluten-free crust, 541-924-9303. 920 KSHO. Back here at West Albany High School. Again, the nice post-game tradition as the Bulldogs students and players all gather together to sway to the alma mater here at West Albany. Not quite as big as the circle against South Albany, which went from baseline to baseline, but this one basically from one baseline to the other free throw line. A lot of students here tonight, and every single one of them enjoyed what they saw. 70 to 42 victory from West Albany. Really good turnout by the whole community tonight. You know that they're anticipating lots of people in both upper sections are, are extended to allow for the fans. And, and uh, what a great showing by the fans tonight. And, and, and dressed in pink, and what a great job by this West Albany Bulldog team to get out early, to get out early on this. <laughs> We're getting so high five. Oh, the West Albany team coming over to uh, give some greetings over here. But this West Albany team, they did. They imposed their will on Crescent Valley from the start. CV gets off with, to the early 2 nothing lead, 
and then it was all Bulldogs from yep. there. And they, uh, you know, the Bulldogs uh, leading by 22 at the half end up winning this game by 28. They played great at both ends of the floor and really gave Crescent Valley no, absolutely no hope in this game. It's what we've been hoping to see from this Bulldog team. You hope they're able to ride it through now to the end of the season. Now, I'll be perfectly honest. After the matchup against Crescent Valley that took place back on January the 16th, at Crescent Valley when the Raiders won 58-55 in overtime, Jeff and I were walking to the car, and both of us, I think, were very concerned about where West was at that point. It dropped them to 1-2 and two in league play. They had not looked particularly good in that game against Crescent Valley. I think that everybody on West Albany side would admit that. It was not their strongest performance. And they had gotten away from some of the things that made them so good, getting the ball inside, utilizing the skill of their three top players, who are among the three best in the state at 5A. We must remember that. I mean, they're tremendous players. But Wes had gotten away from that a little bit that night. Tonight, you get Chad Sherwood involved. 29 points for Chad. Six more threes. He was 7 of 8 on threes on Tuesday. Tonight, I think he finishes 6 of 8. I want to say somewhere thereabouts. Jeff might have the exact number. But somewhere in the vicinity of 13 of 16 on threes in the last two games for Chad. Cody LaHoda hits a couple threes. We see Jesse Berkey hit a three at the end. So the Bulldogs hot from outside. They get a power dunk inside from Nate Sherwood early. They gave him a lot of energy. They get the two-hand dunk late from Isaiah Edwards, one of the highlights of the year. They get strong play inside from Jalen Schlegel. They get strong play outside again from the point guard, Sawyer Reed. Everybody in uniform tonight contributed. I mean, this is about as good as it gets for Wes. Yes, it, it was a complete performance by everybody that stepped on the floor. And you just could feel it. After the, uh, you know, as, as West Albany went on that, that uh, was it a 9-0 run to get it to 9-2, yeah. In that, in that first quarter, you just had this feeling that something special was happening. It's the West Albany team that we knew that we could see if they could put it all together, and they certainly did tonight. And let's not, let's not forget, this isn't against you know, Lebanon or, or some of the teams right. that, are, that are way down in the power rankings. You're talking about the number 11 team in the state power rankings. This Crescent Valley team was on a roll and had beaten Corvallis already, they were, they were uh, uh, you know, showing that they were a force to be reckoned with in this conference. And West just dissected them. They they just absolutely dissected them. West has a lot to be proud of and some momentum to ride now. You go into the rest of the season, you've still got a tough game. You've, you've got uh, you've got South Albany at South Albany. Yep. It's all, always tough. South Albany coming off a copy coming off a victory, I believe, last night. And, yes, uh, over and Dallas, yep. yes, over Dallas. You've still got Corvallis, which they've always got some tricks up their sleeve. But really, I like where West is right now. It shows a lot about the character. You talk about the, the Bulldogs being 1-2 and two in conference play and suffering a really bad loss against Crescent Valley over there, a lethargic loss, a, a uh, we'll say, less than manly performance against, uh, against Crescent Valley. shows a lot to me about the character of this team that they have rebounded from that and strung together some great wins to keep them in that top eight in the power rankings and to have them stay one of the most respected programs in the state in 5A right now. I guess critics would point out that Tanner Sanders did not play tonight for Crescent Valley. Let me be the first to say, Tanner Sanders does not make a 28-point difference in this game. No, West no. was going to win this one way or the other, and I wish we had the audio to play back of what you said in the pregame, that if West played their best tonight, if West came out the way you thought they might, that they could win by 20. You were wrong. <laughs> they won by they 28. They won by 28. <laughs> but you nailed it. I mean, when they came out with the energy that they did, whatever, again, whatever you said in the locker room before the game, it carried over throughout. I mean, they had the energy. You knew that they wanted this one after the way Crescent Valley had beaten them the first time. And they harnessed that energy of revenge into a wire-to-wire -wire effort. Yeah, it was uh, just, I, I don't know that we can expand on that any better. It's just, uh, it's a great win for Wes. It's fun to go into the weekend now with, uh, with this feeling and, and knowing that, uh, s that something special truly could be happening with this program. Maybe on that way, West Albany avenges their earlier defeat to CV. They win tonight one-sidedly, 70-42 to 42 the final score. I know at some point during the night we fell behind on break, so let's sneak one in here and we'll continue at K-Show. Making life easier and more productive, that's what Len Benton Tractor can do for you. And it all begins by discovering how the full line of Kubota equipment can help. Ben Benton Tractor, we're still doing business the American way. Highway 99E, Tangent. Building a home? Remodeling? Spring a leak? Think brass plumbing. Prompt quality service at affordable rates. Whatever your plumbing needs, including disasters, count on brass plumbing. Call 926-2727. For Brass Plumbing.
Looking to save money on lighting fixtures? Larry and Marge Tomlin, owners of J&J Electric, invite you to compare prices, but don't buy until you've seen the high quality and low prices at J&J. Visit their spectacular showroom. The hometown folks at J&J Electric appreciate your business. J&J Electric, South Pacific and 22nd in Albany. Serving the Mid-Valley for 37 years with collision, mechanical, glass, and RV repair, Pacific Auto Services is now Stavros Auto Services. Same people, same commitment to excellence. You've got their name on it. Call Stavros Auto Services at 541-926-7248. Unforgettable 920. Welcoming in Jeff Kider once again. Jeff with our final game stats here tonight. West Albany beats Crescent Valley 70-42. to Moving into a second place tie in the middle Lamont at 7-3. and Jeff, all Bulldogs tonight. Beginning, of course, with Chad Sure with 29 points for Chad. Six more threes. And there were a lot of other Bulldogs who helped, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, they, uh, and that's after the Bulldogs kind of cooled off in the second right. half. Uh, they, they ended up shooting 58% from the field. Uh, and, uh, again, a statistic that I like being the point guard mentality that I have is that 21 assists on 28 made baskets. So just uh, they just seemed to be working so well as a team tonight. It was so great to see. Uh, so the Bulldogs ended up uh, 20 of uh, 36 from the field, inside the three-point line, and 9 of 14 beyond the arc. So uh, they ended up shooting 64% from uh, outside the three-point line, and a big part of that was Chad Sherwood, and we'll get to that in just a bit. Um, Crescent Valley uh, ended up 35% uh, from the field. They were 16 of 39 inside the two-point arc, and the Bulldogs defended their three-point shooting extremely well. They were only 1 of 10 from outside the arc. Uh, So uh, not only a great offensive effort, but a great defensive effort as well. Uh, again, Chad Sherwood, like you said, 29 points. Uh, he was a four of six inside the three-point line, six of seven. I mean, what is that for two games in a row? Is it, uh, what, 13 of? It would be 13 of 50. Amazing. Absolutely. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, all, we, he was also three of four from the three-point line, had three rebounds, three assists, and a couple of steals. Uh, Cameron Dixon uh, had four points. Um, I think everybody on the bench played. Sawyer Reed played but didn't score, but had five assists. Uh, uh, Jesse Berkey uh, had three points and two assists. Uh, ben Engel played and didn't score. Isaiah Edwards had a thunderous uh, dunk for two points. Uh, Brady Young had two points. Cody Lahota, uh six points, three rebounds, and two assists uh, in a starting position. Nate Sherwood, double figures with 12 points and six rebounds. Jalen Schlegel, eight points, eight rebounds, and five assists. Uh, also had two steals. Josh Bryant, uh, two points. And uh, Keaton uh, Bader had two points uh, for the Bulldogs. Uh, leading the way for Crescent Valley, they did not have any players in double figures. Uh, Muhammad Hassan had nine points. Uh, Jacob Wood, seven and Dustin Digen uh, led the way for Crescent Valley with uh, six points. And Jared Bub Garner had uh, eight points also. So a great effort uh, by the Bulldogs tonight. Uh, uh, I like the uniforms. I don't yeah. know if you guys asked, if you're going to ask me that, but uh, I think it was a good look. It was strong, and a strong performance. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. Jeff Kider delivering our final game stats tonight. West Albany wins at 70-42. to 42. If we do need one more break, let's do it here, and we'll come back to K-Show. Family owned and operated since 1979, Crabtree Auto stresses the small stuff when it comes to maintaining your vehicle. An oil change every 3,000 miles is a small thing now, but adds up to big rewards down the road. Crabtree Auto on Hill Street, just south of 9th in Albany. Now is the time to buy a car at Mark Thomas Motors. Four generations of the auto business and here to stay. Mark Thomas Motors is big on supporting local events. Three locations in Albany, Dodge Chrysler Jeep, Hyundai, GMC Buick Pontiac. Now is the time to buy a car at Mark Thomas Motors in Albany. Lynn Lane's in Lebanon, home of the best burger in town. Good family fun. Bowling. Open every day and until 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday nights. Ballistic bowling starts at 10 on Saturday night. Stop by Lynn Lane's in Lebanon. Just like the Bulldogs, Courtesy Corner Shell gives you everything they have every time you drive in. Fast and friendly service, windows always clean. Non-ethanol fuels for small engines, boats, and vintage cars available. You can't beat Courtesy Corner Shell near Queen on Pacific Boulevard. They'll be happy to see you. 920 KSHO. Awesome. Thank you. 
that thank you is for the West Albany Audiovisual Club as they come and unhook their jack tonight. It was nice to have a video portion. It was available on WAHSTV.com. Nice addition with our audio in the background. Hopefully that was okay. Hopefully it meshed up and uh, you enjoyed what you heard and saw tonight as West Albany dispatches of Crescent Valley 70-42, to 42, the final score. Welcome back in, Wally Ordeman. We've talked uh, about this effort tonight. Tremendous on both ends of the floor. Now you got to get back to it. There are four games remaining in the season. Home to Woodburn on Tuesday at Dallas next Friday. Home to Corvallis the following Tuesday at South Albany Friday the 22nd in the game that will wrap up the regular season. So four games left. None of them are against teams ranked higher than 21st in the power rankings. But now you got to take care of business. Now you got to beat the teams that you would be expected to beat. Yep, and and uh, you know certainly uh, South Albany will be a test on the road. But West West fortunate now after having beaten Corvallis on the road, they get Corvallis here. I like where West Albany stands. It's a tough final week, and uh, you know they can't look past next week. You can't look past Woodburn and Dallas to get to Corvallis and South Albany. You just can't allow yourself to do that. This is a disciplined team now. I, I think that they'll, uh, they'll have their heads right and be, and be ready to go. I did want to single out, you know, we've talked about a lot of different players, but I want to go back to Jalen Schlegel for a minute because eight points, five assists, right. and uh, eight, uh, rebounds. Eight, eight rebounds, a couple of steals. He did have a couple of turnovers, but, but really such a solid performance again by Jalen. He makes his presence felt. There are so many things that don't show up that Jalen does don't don't show up in the in the box score. You know the uh, I don't know if Jeff keeps block shots, but uh, certainly getting it, altering shots, adjusting what uh, what the other team wants to do offensively just by his sheer size and the length of his arms, uh, disrupting uh, in, in uh, with him up top in the in the one three one with him down deep in the in the full court pressure you know with those arms and adjusting passes there there's just so many things that he has an impact on in a basketball game and tonight was no exception it was a great performance again by Jalen you talk about him adjusting shots and we've talked about the highlights of Nate Sherwood's dunk and Isaiah Edwards dunk but maybe the defensive highlight of the night was a shot that barely nearly adjusted official Bill Draper's face <laughs> an emphatic block by Jalen went right off of Bill uh, either the chin or the chest, and it shook him up for a moment, kind of dazed him, but that was an impact block from Schlegel, who did have it going again on both ends for West. Again, our next broadcast, Tuesday night at Woodburn High School. Or No, it'll be here. We've already been to Woodburn, but it's going to be here against Woodburn on Tuesday night, the Battle of the Bulldogs, as West Albany goes to 7-3 and three in league, 13-7 and seven overall. Woodburn tonight was hosting Silverton, so you can bet most of your pennies that Woodburn will come into that one 3-7 and seven in the middle at 6-13. and 13. Overall, West, a, what was that, an 11-point win, 21-point win the first time against Woodburn? Oh, 15. I was close. Somewhere in between. 15-point win the first time, and they'll look to match that on Tuesday here against Woodburn. Reminder to get started, get finished at Lynn Benton Community College, the main campus just down the street here from West in Albany. Find them on the web, lynnbenton.edu. Get started, get finished at Lynn Benton Community College. Final stat of the night, West Albany, their last two games, 22 of 35 from behind the arc. And, and, that's, and that's what your inside presence will allow you to do. Packing it, the teams have to pay attention to the size of West Albany inside. When, West, uh, when, when they do that, West makes them pay from the outside, and West is starting to get hot. And 13 threes for Chad Sherwood in his last two games. 13 of 15 in his last two. He was 7 of 8 on Tuesday, 6 of 7 tonight, 29 points, 52-point week for Chad Sherwood. This award does not exist in high school sports, but if there were a mid Willamette Conference Player of the Week, it would be wrapped up, and you'd give it to number three for West. No question about it, and uh, sure proud of him and, and really starting to show what this young man can bring. When he doesn't have the shot, he's dishing out the rock to, to get the assist to. A lot, a lot of fun to watch him. Thank you, Wally. Thanks, Ryan. It was great. We'll look forward to next week. Great effort tonight from West Albany. This one was a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed listening. Final score tonight, West Albany 70 and Crescent Valley 42. We'll join you again on Tuesday night. Have a great weekend, everybody. Until then. For Wally Orderman and Jeff Kiter, I'm Ryan Pitts. Thank you for listening tonight. Bulldogs win at 70-42 to 42 on K-Show. If you'd like to do it yourself or need helpful advice doing it, your neighborhood Ace Hardware and Contractor Center can help. Economy Supply Building Center has been that helpful place for over 58 years. Economy Supply Building Center, where Highway 34 becomes Tangent Street in Lebanon. Need some electrical work in your home or business, but it just seems like too small of a job to call the pros? No matter what the job, call City and Suburban Electric. Proud to be a contributing member of our community, City and Suburban Electric. Call 451-5609. 
Lassen RV at Albany has the new RV models on the lot now, ready for you to buy. Lassen RV Service Department has a new truckload of parts and accessories on sale just in time for fall fix-up. From changing a light bulb to rebuilding your entire RV, no job is too big or too small for Lassen RV at Albany. Where friends send their friends. Join the fun at the Albany Athletic Club. Group fitness classes from low-impact dance to traditional circuit training, plus racquetball and more. Watch your waistline shrink and your health improve every day. Start now at the Albany Athletic Club on Hickory next to Tom's Garden Center. Thanks for listening to tonight's broadcast of West Albany High School Basketball on the Unforgettable 920 KSHO. Bulldogs basketball has been brought to you by Economy Supply Building Center, City and Suburban Electric, Albany Grocery Outlet, Mark Thomas Motors, Courtesy Corner Shell, H&R Block, Stavros Auto Services, Willamette Community Bank, Lassen RV, J&J Electric, Leshwab Tires of Albany, Lynn Lanes, Brass Plumbing, Crabtree Automotive, Power Honda, Figaro's, Albany Athletic Club, Linco Federal Credit Union, Burgerville, Now Builders, Wilson Motors, and by Lynn Benton Tractor. Listen throughout the season for more exciting Bulldogs basketball here on 920 KSHO. This broadcast is exclusive property of Ease Broadcasting, Unforgettable 920 KSHO, and Ryan Wally Productions. U.S. copyright law protects this broadcast. Duplication or rebroadcast of any portion of this program is strictly prohibited without prior written consent. We now join our regular program. You found us, so now tell your friends. America's Best Music is on the show, AM 920 K-Show.